Yeah. Like good music. Chat, you guys want music? <gasps> Magnus Carlsen played the Carl Khan. Okay. Uh, sorry. Let me pop the game one second. Um. Wait, is it the wrong? Is that game four? They they didn't label the game. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Okay, there we go. I think we're good. We're good to go. All right. Okay, let's go. So game one. Wesley starts with white, by the way. So important game. Um. Okay. So. Okay, we have advanced Carl Khan. Magnus is playing the Carl Khan. I'm kind of surprised that he's not playing e. He's not playing e5 on move one and being solid. Um, but I think he wants to he wants to be be sort of sharp and more aggressive from the get-go. Are you surprised by that? Um Well first of all, the, the choice to play the Sicilian yesterday. Bad choice, right? Last game Sicilian? Oh people say there's no music? What? Like, there should there should still be music, right? No. Like, I really hear asking. music. Oh, you guys are trolling me. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm, I get debated. Okay. One second. <laughs> I'm getting debated. Now that there's so many people watching, I just get so debated out of like, out of nowhere. Like I had this happen yesterday and now it's happening again today. Um, okay. All right. So, uh, so, so pretty standard opening. What, what were you saying, Levy? Sorry about that. No, I was, I was saying, uh, yesterday the choice to play the Sicilian was kind of a bad choice, huh? Like... I mean, I felt that Magnus, I, I actually was thinking about this last night, and, and you know what I was thinking is um, is that uh, is that Magnus is, in some ways, I think, playing playing for content or playing to the crowd a little bit more than he normally would be um, in these online events, is, is what I was thinking. Because I thought his choice yesterday in that last game to play Sicilian was completely inexplicable, really. I, I think it was just insane. Yeah, because what, a, I mean... Yeah, and then the game just was, uh, well, Wesley surprised him in the Sveshnikov. Right, I mean, and, and, but the thing is, it's not, it's not even so much, um, it's not even so much that, that, um, that Wesley surprised him, it's that this whole line with knight to d5, Wesley has played it many times, and it's a very sharp line. Uh, it's very hard to draw those missions, so either you're gonna win or you're gonna lose. So in terms of the match strategy, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to play like that, in my opinion. So I think he was just playing, he's playing for the audience, playing for the crowd, for the hype, for all these different things, actually, more so than just purely from the chess standpoint. Okay, this position, knight d2, knight b3. Mm -hmm. Pretty uh, standard. I've, yeah, it's very standard. I've had, um, you know who played this against me? With Mr. White? Anish Giri in bullet, twice. Yes, because, I mean, this is standard play. This is how Super GM proves that the Karo Khan is not a good opening level. So, I mean, like, I'm just saying. So the next time you face uh, Firuja, are you gonna hit him with e5, knight of three, knight d2, knight b3? Um, not necessarily. Uh, actually, bishop b4 is. Wait, what is bishop b4? Uh, I think he's trying to bait c3 and just go back to e7. I, again, I think no, it's but, a I little. No, but I mean, but bit... after c3, bishop e. Well, first of all, Levy, haven't you done a course on the Karakhan? Aren't you like one of the world's leading experts? No, not my course. It's Ostrovsky's course. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna throw your friend under the bus. Okay, it's all good. I see how it is. Um. Did he just go bishop f8? Well, I mean, my, my, my point is, like, what what's the point of c3? Doesn't c3 only help white? I mean, or is it that he's worried that white will go, like, is he worried white goes bishop d2 and puts pressure on a5? But it's never real pressure, is it? No. <laughs> so, not, I mean, I if know. it's never real pressure, then, then I can only think that c3 should help white, because if that's not an intention, then you just help white build this big center with the connect four. So um, it's a little bit strange to me. Um, yeah, it's a little bit strange to me. Okay, so now what? Now we have 97. Yeah, and now I mean Wesley has to decide what his idea is. Is he gonna play like c4 at some point? Is he gonna play knight h4? Is he gonna go like knight e1, bishop d3, which I think is a pretty classic approach to try and prevent c5, um, and then go f4, g4. I think all, all moves are reasonable. I think knight e1 to me feels like the most natural uh, Karl Khan move considering the system. So I would expect knight e1 here. Definitely. Yeah, very common idea. 
first of all, two things. Like in some positions, you can trap the bishop with g4, but is it you're saying it's more to play like bishop d3 and take with a knight and go for c5? Yeah, so for example, let's say black doesn't go knight e7, black plays g5 here, which is another way you can kind of try to play this. Then white usually responds with knight e1, something like knight e7, bishop d3, takes knight e3, and then f4 to attack the black structure on, uh, with the pawns on h g5. That's exactly what Peter Spidler did when I played him. Yeah, you, you super That is jams, also. You guys exactly what peter Savidler did against me when i played against him in the nh rising stars tournament in amsterdam in 2000 and uh 2011. well there you go peter Spidler using recycled lines he's got he's got to get a little bit more uh mm -hmm. up to speed exactly so is that, <laughs> is that a good example of how chess openings just don't fade like, i mean i think there's certain structural ideas that you tend to be able to play um all the time Oh, he plays h3. Is that surprising? Um, not that surprising. I, I mean, as long as g5 is not a big threat, which it doesn't appear to be a threat here, then I think, um, then I think, yeah, it's completely reasonable. And I assume that the idea is just to get knight e1 at some point, um, and play f4, g4 with the pawn at h3 will support the g4 push. Yeah, I have a question for you. Obviously, you guys all, you, all of you guys know, like, every opening, but isn't it pretty rare? to see Magnus with Karo Khan. Like, he has played it. He played it against you. He plays it here and there, but it, he doesn't play it. Like, so... Yeah, I mean, I think Magnus, I, honestly, just my honest opinion is he might just be a little bit bored. He might just be a little bit bored. He's trying to play new creative ideas to see how far he can push the envelope. Ah. I see. So I, I think that's more what it is than anything else. And I mean, I will say that's one thing that, that a lot of people will probably not understand, but... I remember, so in, in 2011, when I was working with Gary Kimovich Kasparov, the former world champion, arguably the greatest player of all time, we, we had a conversation, it wasn't about Magnus, it was actually about um, about Vladimir Kramnik. And, um, and the conversation related to Kramnik and how after he became the world champion, there was a period, I think maybe 2005 to 2007, when he started playing playing E4 on move one. So Kramnik had played D4 and Knight F3 more or less his entire career. And then after he became world champion, he started playing E4 on move one. And, um, and and the point the point that I'm making with the story is that what what we're discussing is that um is that Gary was saying it was a very smart choice by Cram to do this because he was sort of pushing the envelope, seeing what he could do, seeing how good his knowledge was, and how much he could play from fresh new positions. And for Magnus, I think this is kind of in the in a similar vein where he's trying to see how far he can experiment, what he can play, what he can get away with, what he can't get away with, um, at least before over the board chess return. Can I just say that uh, it's very fun watching Kramnik do commentary? Uh, he just, I don't know. There's just something about, he, he's so, he's very eloquent. Like he, you know, just a, it's very fun to watch. Like he, one, they, they one of the greatest him. chess minds in the last uh, half century. So, I mean, yeah, very did knowledgeable. You, Hikaru, did you see that um, Peter Nielsen uh, and I don't know, Jan Who? Gustafsson? Oh, Peter he, Heine, Peter. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I never know if I'm supposed to say his his second or third name as his surname. I mean, you're, you definitely, because when you said Peter Nielsen, I'm like, who who is that? <laughs> okay, so Peter Heine Nielsen. Yeah. Um, he did a... He did a... They, they did a list of the top players in the world, and I think they put Kramnik, like, 12th all time. Or, like, 13th. Wow. He wasn't in their top 10. So yeah, he wasn't much in disrespect. Their, I, I'm pretty sure. I might be wrong, but I think he was outside wow. the top 10. That's Either so him or... disrespect. I think either him or Anand maybe were, were outside the top 10. I don't think Wait, they were both. What? So I'm pretty sure, yeah. Someone in chat can surely give me that list. Um, we're watching the game. No, that's insane. That's completely insane. I will go look. Yeah. So an anyway, um, all right. So so it's a pretty, pretty standard still. Wesley plays Bishop D2. I think this is going to be a very slow, grindy opening. Probably C4 at some point to... Um, open the diagonal again i i don't i don't know i mean it's gonna it's gonna be slow but i, I like what wesley has done so far um and we'll see what happens in this middle game oh yeah i was right kramnik is 11th and vichy is 9th so it's very what? close but yeah sorry they... one second let me let me open this let, let me see this oh it's just it's just a video though it's not it's not an actual no no, no it's this link it's this link it, it has a little link i mean it's um 
But it's just a, a video, isn't it? I just got some link to the video. It's here. this. I sent it to you on Discord. I mean, it's a, you know, a, a rival website where uh, this tournament is being hosted. Right, but uh, it's, it's, oh, 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 I see. Actually, I can scroll down. Okay, let, let yeah. me just scroll down. Let's see. Okay, they number put, one, Garrick is brought number two, Magnus. Completely fine. Bobby Fisher. Lasker? What? Yeah, they put Lasker as fourth all time. This is a very suspicious list to me. Very suspicious <laughs> list. It's already I mean, sus. Like, it, but are, are they just basing it off of world champions? Like, because I mean, this is the problem. So I'll give you an example. They have Fabiano at number 19, for example. So if you put Fabiano at number 19, Fabiano is better than every chess player on this list, with the exception of probably Kasparov. Maybe Kasparov. I mean, I think even that's deb debatable. Um, and Magnus Carlsen. So Fabiano is better than everyone except for the top two players. So then, then how do you how do you rank it? Because that's the problem with every generation. Every player is stronger than the previous generation. So it's like, for example, I get that Jose Raul Capablanca was world champion, very strong player, but Fabiano, of course, is a much better player. So like, it's very tricky to rank like this to me. Um, or like Paul Morphy at number ten. I, I just I, I I don't know. It seems very arbitrary in terms of the rankings that I'm seeing here. Well, I mean, yeah, Kremnik uh, as the level is very. I mean. I mean, you're you're ranking Kramnik as 11, then Tigran Petrosian is number 12. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. The sorry, the, but... the 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 former world champion chat, not. Um... <laughs> right, Levy. Exactly. Yes. Let's be clear on that. Um, yeah. But I mean, you're putting Paul Morphy ahead of Kramnik. I mean, that that's like one of the weirdest things. This list is very very weird to me. I just I don't know how you come up with this list. Well, yeah, I wanted to bring it to your attention. I was pretty sure Kramnik was 11. That's why I remember. Yeah, I mean, like, how is Sergey 49? Like, how is Sergey on this list, for example? I, I, like, I don't even understand. How do you put Sergey on this list? Because, like, it's, it's not even so much about the specific rankings, but it's just, like, when I looked at this list, like, they have so many of these old players. Like, what is the criteria? It's, it's strange. It's very strange. Very strange. Like, I would say Kramnik is easily top 10. I mean, I think in many ways, Anon... Uh, like Anon and Karpov don't get anywhere near enough credit for how good they were. But anyway, whatever. Let's go back to the game. No, it's the, it's all happening. Ninety one. Mm -hmm. So now what for Black? I mean, I I've played these positions enough. Like G five, Bishop G seven is a thing, but G five now would just you would get um... destroyed. It right, so, like... so what, this is, like I said, it's very thematic. I, I, like, what I was saying before is when you get these structures, the piece play tends to be very similar no matter what the assortment of the black pieces is. And Wesley does go for this knight e1, which is d3. I think black here has to decide between knight g6 and knight f5. I think knight g6 traditionally is considered the best line. I've actually had this position, I think, maybe this exact position against Eric Hansen, or Eric Hansen, sorry, um, one of the chess bras quite a few times online. Um, and I've never really liked this position for black. I think it's very passive and very, very, very dry. So, um, so, so yeah, so it's, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not, in, I'm not in love with this. And obviously um, if knight f5, g, g4, you just plant the knight on yeah. h4. And... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. By the way, you guys are wondering why I say Erich. I was saying Erich because, like, I, I think, I, like, when, I, when I'm talking privately with people, I call him Erich Hans, Hansinovich or something. And, of course, as you guys know, with Slavic languages, it's like there's always a CH at the end of the name. So so that, that's, that's why uh, I, I forgot my little nickname. Okay, so Magnus does go Knight F5 here, uh, and he's going to play C5 next move. And, and I, think, I think Magnus is doing relatively okay, but we're still in the opening, and it's going to be imbalanced. Okay, bishop d3, not knight d3. Mm -hmm. Is the yeah, idea yeah, g4? Is he, is he trying to go g4? Um, At some point, yeah, I think so. I mean, I like this position. Okay, so what is going on? Now g4 has to be played, right? g4, knight h4 takes, rook h7. And eventually, intuitively, I feel like white should be better here. But for humans, I think it's going to be very hard to prove. Because it, it just, black doesn't have to castle. Like, if, if white could just play a random move between h1 and black castles, after c4, black's going to get killed on the queen side, maybe, at some point. Obviously, in this specific position, it doesn't work. Maybe you go rook c1 and then c4. But the ideas of attacking on the queen side are very sharp. Um, but the thing is, black won't actually have to castle right away after g4, knight h4, takes, takes, look at rook c1. Um... Black maybe just run the king over, play h5. So it's very, very hard to play, I think. No, but g4 is like super committal, right? Like he has to be very certain. 
Right. The G4 is okay. I think also Magnus might be trying to provoke Wesley into going all in with G4 and F4. This might be Magnus psych psychologically trying to force Wesley to play something that he thinks Wesley is uncomfortable with. Where if Wesley is aggressive and he starts pushing ahead, he's better. But if he doesn't, then immediately it fizzles out and it's completely fine with Magnus. Okay, well, prediction time. I mean, I, I, prediction time for the match or the game? No, no, no. Well, sure, both. Do you think Wesley's going to go G4, first of all? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's likely. I, th I think for Wesley, um, I hate to say this, I, I think I think Wesley's going to, I think Wesley's e either, either is not going to be close at all, and Wesley's going to, Wesley's going to, um, like like lose a couple of games and just lose, lose very cleanly, or I think it's going to go to Armageddon. That's my prediction. And then who knows? Well, Armageddon would obviously be very fun. Armageddon would be great because everyone gets triggered again, right? <laughs> Why? Sorry? Well, because like I, I know everyone was so disappointed that like my match against Magnus, we played seven days, and then it came down to Armageddon game. Oh. And it, it'd be hilarious if this this one comes down to Armageddon as well. <laughs> yeah, but it's good. It's good content. It's good content. Um. We have to. We have to have a winner. Mm -hmm. uh, someone's in chat is saying yesterday I said that classical chess was already damaged, but esport chess has a problem. People can't get good at blitz and rap until they learn classical chess. That's actually not 100 percent true. A lot of my, I, I would say, for a long time, I think I was significantly better at rap and at blitz chess than I was at classical chess. When I, when I was growing up, I think until I maybe like 15, 16, when I really focused hard on studying and. And focusing on classical chess, I think I, I was much better blitz and rapid player, objectively. I mean, when I was like 17 years old, I was 3,700 at blitz on the internet chess book. Um, so I, I think I was actually much better at rapid and blitz than I was at classical chess. So I, I kind of disagree with that statement. I think there are a lot of people who are better at rapid and blitz than, than in classical chess. And then eventually at some point they focus and they can get better. Like Hans is another example, I think. Right, Levy? Like Hans is great at blitz, at blitz, but in classical chess it's not comparable. So if Hans really buckles down and works hard at classical chess, he can improve quite a bit. But right now he's a much better blitz player than he is um, at classical. I think I have to defer to you, given you have a lot more experience. I feel like I can't comment on a young player who's just better than me at chess. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> okay. like what am I gonna say? Oh, you know he should do this and this. Like okay. Who's gonna take me seriously? I feel like if you say it, it's different than you know if if, if good old Gotham here starts giving Hans feedback. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean I can talk about the position, uh, mm -hmm. but no, I mean Hans should. You know, uh, there's a new GM in America. Who happened yesterday? Um, Praveen Balakrishnan got his final GM Norman as Charlotte Round Robin. So, oh, nice. Yeah, uh, I think he's like 18 or 19. He just became yeah. GM. So someone in chat is also saying, how can you become a good at Blitz without playing classical? Because you have much, it's much easier to play Blitz. You just get on your computer and you play over and over and over again. Um, so like, I'll give you give you guys an example. I'm gonna go back to move one and show you guys something. So, um, so I'm gonna go back to 1999, I believe it was. I was 12 years old, um, and I was gonna be playing in the World Youth Chess Championship in Oropa, Spain. I was about like 2250, 2300, and um, and so I, I I remember this game very well because it because it was. It was on the internet and my rating was really high so i had the opportunity to play against a lot of these top chess players so i i played this game at the time i was playing the night orf every game was black and um, we had this game this uh this night orf english attack you can just watch my stream if you want let me anyway i played the e6 f3 b5 g4 of course all this stuff was known at the time there were a lot of games like kasparov and non or non kasparov in, in this, this whole setup um in this english attack and um so i think it was like h6 h4 was it the h6 h4 line i think it was this one um, knight bd7, castle b4, knight a4, queen a5, b3. I think it was this, this one. Which, which one is it with? And I think it was this uh, this, this knight b6, a3, knight a4 takes, takes, queen c7, takes. Um, I think it was like d5, e5, knight e7, f4, knight b6. And so th this rook h3 move was played in this this game that I played online. I was just, it was this mysterious gem. I didn't know who it was at the time. Um, and this line was completely unknown. Computer research was not where it is today. Do you have the position, Lovey? I I do not. But okay. I remember you telling me about I this, uh, and then you incorporated it into your play. That I remember. 
yeah, so so anyway, but, but the point I'm making is it's much easier to play online, and um, and so th I had this game knight a4, c4, takes queen c2, knight b6, knight e6, fe6, bishop b6, I think I took queen g6, king e7, f5, and I, and I lost, because obviously, as you see, it's plus 17, it's winning for white. But I had these opportunities to play online against these strong grandmasters. Now, at the time, there I, I didn't know who it was. I thought it might be Kasparov or um, or maybe like Kramnik or someone. In the end, it turned out I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Morozevich, uh, who the game was against. But uh, but but the point is that like it's much easier to play online. You have much more you have many more opportunities, much more experience um, to play and to improve. So like a game like this, I would you know I would never have the opportunity to play against a grandmaster like Morozevich at the time, who was top ten in the world. Um, over the board, so you can actually improve a lot by playing against top grandmasters on the internet. You know, but I will say, uh, mm -hmm. Hans did it totally differently. Hans has like a blitz repertoire. Like if you look at his blitz games, he plays like London, and then um, over the board he plays like. Uh, Levy, let's focus on the game for a second. Apparently, there's a there's a trick here. There's attacking with DC four, queen four, knight four. So Wesley, oh, he didn't go G four by the way. Right. Play queen c2, bishop g6, c4. So after dc4, queen c4, I guess knight d4 apparently is good because the queen d4 you just take and bishop g6, f g6, and you plant the queen on d5 and you're up a juicer. And if you take on d4 the knight, there's knight e5 and your whole house is on fire. Uh oh. Uh oh. So he's, uh, he's, he's poking on the wrong side of the board. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, well, let's, let's wait to see and then we can get back to, um, back to your your question in a second well magnus is gonna take on d4 right well let's see let's see i mean magnus has not been super sharp tactically i built throughout this match or throughout this, this this first event so it's not not a guarantee that he'll see it um but i think um, if, he, if he uses more than 30 seconds he's probably gonna see it wait does wesley think that he has like knight d4 bishop g6 or something and then like i don't know is, is that just losing just for, for... B3, right? And then, and then queen e6? Take I was thinking queen e6, yeah. Nah, that's just losing. Okay, so he just he just blundered or he sacrificed something? I Maybe... think he just blundered. He just blundered it. But see, I mean, the whole setup is kind of sketchy to begin with. Because, like, this is what I was going to say. Is I think this is... Speaking of Lasker, uh, one thing that a lot of people are critical about the former world champion Emmanuel Lasker on is that they say he played, like, dubious moves. Um, but it, that's more, I think, a psycholo psychological thing where it's like he sort of... He understood his opponents and how they would play. And... Um, and so I think Magnus here, it's like he's basically seeing, can Wesley be aggressive and just go forward? Can he can he be aggressive and attack me, or is he just going to play something more positional and try? And in this case, he tries to play something positional. And even if the tactic doesn't exist, it's already where black is black is equal. So I think Magnus is playing playing this game from a very psychological standpoint, more so than purely like precision chess. Well, so far it's been okay. I don't know where the theory uh, left. Um, I'm guessing I mean, probably he, should, he had to go G4, F4 to, to try to claim an advantage. By the way, big shout out to Anna, of course. Anna's here in the chat. Hope, oh, oh, Magnus sees it. Oi, Gavalt. This is going to be uh, problematic, I think, for Wesley now. Okay, but hold on. Uh, queen D4? Yeah, Queen B3. Queen B3, Bishop G6, FG6. Is it so bad? It's... It's bad. I mean, I'm not sure how bad it is, but like structurally, it feels like, I mean, I mean to go knight f3 back, I mean is what the computer says, I guess. I, I just it feels, it feels like it it hinges on like one or two moves. Like if if you can find the right plan, maybe you can be only slightly worse. But this is a disaster. Just a disaster. So, okay, so while we're waiting for... Wesley's definitely going to think for a bit here, I, I would assume. Um, what was your question? Your question is about repertoires, right? Well, I was saying that, you you know, you said you get an opportunity to, like, play online and find ideas and openings and everything, but I feel like now, like, somebody like Hans, um, if you look at his games, he yeah. plays mostly London, he plays, like, knight c3, bishop f4, but then over the board he plays... E4, D4. So. Yeah, so, you know, this is... I'm going to... This is, this, is, this is very sad to say, but... Um, when I was playing in the, when I started playing online a lot in the late '90s, all the usernames weren't known. You didn't know who your, who the, who, the, who everybody was. Um, first of all, and then secondly, we weren't at the stage where games were recorded as much. So you could just play your main openings, and it worked. Nowadays, when you do this, 
um, everyone sees your games, they, they download mm -hmm. them, and so it's actually, you can't really do it in the same way as you could when I was growing up. Fair. So it's, but you, did, did you play on public, you played on public accounts, right? On, on ICC. Or, yeah, but, but I mean, the database, it wasn't as easy. It, I mean, it, the, the games, I don't think you could find, you couldn't just find, the games were just automatically saved. Um, so, yeah, it was a different time. Yep. Yeah. Now, uh, now you can download everybody's games. Right. So I'm gonna give you guys another story. So this this is why you also be very careful with the openings you play because uh, I had this game in the 2015, I believe, it was the United States Chess Championship. And the first time I played Mr. Robert Hess, the well-known commentator on Chess.com, the occasional streamer. Um, I had the white pieces, and what happened is my my trainer Chris Littlejohn, he actually went and looked up Robert Hess's games on the Internet Chess Club and what he did against Evans Gambit. And at the time, we saw that in, in his games, Robert always played this bishop to d6 move, which is a line, but it's not very good. Um, and so sure enough, we looked at his games on the Internet Chess Club, and we saw he did this, so I played the Evans Gambit. He, right on cue, he played bishop d6, and I crushed him in a very smooth, uh, smooth game. Can so I yes, show you it's true. Can I show you a... So we have developments, by the way. Everything happened, mm -hmm. and... Uh... In this position, Wesley can go bishop takes h6. Right, and then the computer says g5. Oh! Oh! Do you no, think but, but Levy, this? what's going on? g5? Is it, isn't your bishop h4, just trapped? h4. h4 is the key move. Wow, okay. Aren't you just worse, though? g takes h4? What's the big deal? I oh, mean, knight f3, and you come... I'm not saying it's my idea. By all means, is it not my idea? But Wesley plays... Do you think Mike this bishop h6, or he thought he had g5? Uh, he probably didn't completely, probably did not completely see it, but he's gonna play g5 in a second. Thank you to Guava, Guava shoot with five gifted. Thank you so much. Um, By the I way, guys, you can't. He, I assume Wesley sees g, saw g5 and. He... What? Wow. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Rook f5. So what Magnus wants here is he wants something very positional, um, where he's just gonna argue that he can long term win this pawn on e5. I'm really shocked that he didn't see g5, actually. Maybe he just thought queen g6, rook f7, bishop g5 was fine, and he didn't calculate deeper in, like, knight e5, queen e4, queen d5, something like this. He didn't calculate it deeply. Well, also, do you? they actually have spent a ton of time. Oh. Like... Oh, apparently, according to Thessa, rook f5 is the best move, oddly enough. Hmm. There you go. Yeah. But Hikaru, they've spent a ton of time. Like, they have a, no time to play this game. Like, five minutes? I mean, it's going to be chaos yeah i mean the one thing i would say though is to me it feels like it should be slightly easier for black to play because white has to figure out what he's doing with the knight on e1 and the rook on f1 whereas black is looking at very straightforward ideas like queen c2 knight e5 and i guess rook d1 queen c4 white is okay but the problem is like you have this passive knight this passive rook so white has to come up with a way to get these pieces in the game so from that standpoint it's still a little bit easier for black to play Okay, now obviously here you don't trade queens, right? Because mm -hmm. you help black untangle, so... Right, but Actually, even, even this, though, you still have to think about it. Because if you trade, I mean, after CD5, F4, like, I guess it's bad, but you, you really have to consider it. It's, and that's what I'm saying, like, even though the position is probably okay for white, white's the one who has too many options and too many possibilities. And in general, in Rapid and Blitz, when you're getting low on the clock, you don't want to have 20 different ideas. You want to have, like, one or two ideas. And here, there's nothing set. All the pieces are on the board. And and so it's much easier for Black to play. So the advantage from that standpoint is for, for Black. And I, I think, I mean, Wesley takes because he, he, had, to, he had to figure it out. Um, and I think in a slow game, Wesley might come up with Queen C2, Rook D1, and B3. But in, in a blitz game, uh, Queen D5 looks much more natural just to play F4, get an end game. Um, the problem is, after G5, again, White has to be extremely precise here. Because your your pawn chain is getting broken up, and I think I think Magnus is already well on his way to a win, because he's got a he's got a much better he's got a much more um, solid pawn structure on the queen side. It's all secure. This four v two, and White's pawn structure is in trouble here in the center. The pawn chain is getting broken up. I think knight c five is good. There's g four. Oh, g four. Oh, and then f five. Wait. What is happening? Oh wow, computer says you go knight c5, g4, gf4. Wow. <laughs> and take. Oh man. 
But you can't let white get g4 f5, right? I mean, that's just... No, no, if white gets g4 f5, it's terrible. Pro Actually, the thing is here, though, I think Magnus is kind of forced to find it. I mean, because the only... Yeah, because the problem is after g4, you can't let f5 happen. So Magnus is actually going to be forced to play this. And, and so he won't have a choice, so he's going to play it no matter what. That's the Yeah, that's the problem is that yeah. Magnus is forced to. Because he just, he can't move the rooks f5, it's just terrible. This connect 4 is super powerful. So he gets forced to play it. And it's really good, but it's like, he gets forced into it, he doesn't have an option. So uh, it's a little bit unfortunate for Wesley that there was another option. So if there was another option like rook f8, it would have been interesting to see if Magnus still would sack the exchange like this. D does he see all this in advance, or is this a lot of reacting to what's happening on the board? Oh, this is reaction. Like, this is like this is just reaction. G5 was intuitively breaking the pawn chain, and, and the rest is just intuition of playing the move. Got it. And now, do you think Wesley saw this line? F5 and then they're, this... they're both playing more or less on intuition, just calculating one to two moves ahead. Got it. Well, this, uh, this looks like it could get very dangerous for Wesley. If, like, the pawn gets to e2, I mean, if... Actually... Well, I think it's just d4, d3 is the problem. Or knight b3 with bishop d5 and knight d2. So it's very dangerous, yeah. Actually, Hikaru, how is white not just, like, lost if these pawns survive? Because what does white do? Where's white's play? No, I, I agree. I mean, that's why the, the, that's what, what I was saying. Like, the structure is so solid for black here that it's very hard to play. Yeah, I mean, you just bring the dark square bishop and you push the pawns. But and you, you have your queenside pawns are really weak too, right? A4. Mm -hmm. Okay, now he actually blunders here with bishop f6, which is a very natural move, by the way. And this is what I'm saying. Like, they're playing more on field than they're playing on actual pure calculation. It's now e2, of course. And if rookie one, you have knight e3. But why, why was bishop f6 a blunder? What was the computer thinking there? Um, I mean, apparently bishop d6 or rook f8 are good. Just put pressure on the pawn on e6. But it's not really very natural, like, in, in a blitz game to see that. Knight c2. I guess e2, and then what's... Rook g4 is a very hard move for white to find. <laughs> rook g4, rook e2, huh? You want to get the pawn. Yeah, I think rook g4 is a very tough move to find, although on the other hand, it does make a lot of sense. I mean, e2, rook f2 looks very human, but then d4, d3 is coming with the fork on the knight. Let's see, let's see what Magnus does, because he also has d4. But I guess d4, knight d4, take six, knight b3 is just not very attractive if you go rook d1. Oh wait, no, oh, there's rook g4 there, knight a1, e6, oh wow. Or F6, I mean. Oh, oh. wow. That's crazy. He plays okay, E2. too. Let's see. Moment of truth for Wesley here. No, there's no... I mean, I don't know. That's just such... Yeah, I mean, the question is, will, will he find Rook G4? I mean, it looks to be the only move that doesn't lose here, and it's just... It's, it's not a natural move to play. It really isn't. Like, if you have 10 minutes to think here, I think you can pretty logically reason out why Rook G4 is the only move that makes sense. But with only three minutes on the clock, it's, it's a lot less obvious than the human eye. Can I, uh, can I give you a very funny chat message? Sure. Well, someone just wrote their first message in my chat, and uh, they came in swinging. They said, Wesley should not be a GM. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> All right, dude. <laughs> how, 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 what, what are your thoughts on that take, Hikaru? That's, yeah, I mean, that's just stupid. That's just ridiculous. Alright, so, 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 so there it is. We knocked that one right out of the park. <laughs> it's not even a hot take. I feel like that's, uh, that's lukewarm. Yeah, yeah okay, see, Rook he plays F2. Rook F2 and now D4, Magnus will see it, and it's this just GG. D3. I mean, oh, D4 he's, he's, he's nice. trying, he's try, what he's trying to do, he's trying to get, like, the double Rooks, like, but this is just losing. You think this is it, by the way? Like, I mean, yesterday Magnus yes, started this is it. Nothing. If Magnus wins this game, there will be no messing around. There will be no messing around. Now, Rook D8 is an important move just to finish it off in style. Although, Knight B3, Knight D4 also cleanly mops it up. Yeah, this is, uh... Well, this is over because you just can't... I mean, you just can't, literally can't move any pieces. Like, like, Rook C5, Bishop D4, so... Yeah, that, that's why Rook D8 is a really clean tactical move here. Just to take the open file and the rooks the rooks white really needs the rooks on the open line 
Wow. Yeah, Oops. of course, yeah. I mean, the, the, there's one thing Magnus, even when he's low on time, he, he will be very tech. He's very, very technically sound um, at all times. So, yeah, this is uh, GG's. Um, I was going to say, so does this mean that Karo Khan is good, or is it just because it's Magnus playing it? I think this was a very smart choice, is what I would say about Magnus to play the Karo Khan, because I think he kind of, what he did was he, he like, he, he kind of, he was baiting, he was baiting Wesley. Like, I suspect that Magnus knew this, something along these lines was coming, and probably he, he, he understood that if White really gets aggressive and pushes the pawns in front of the king, it's good for White. But he figured Wesley, generally, he doesn't like to be, he doesn't really like to go all in with, without a clear attack or a clear plan. And, um, and if White doesn't do that, then it's completely fine for Black. And so I think for Magnus, he did it more on psychology than, um, than on pure, pure, like, pure analysis or pure objectivity. He was trying to play psychologically. He was using, he was using the brain as well. Wow, that's really interesting. So it's not just even about preparation of like exact moves. You get a kind of position and you see that your opponent's most critical thing is pushing in front of their king. And if they don't do it, yeah, of course. play it. Oh, wow. There's much more to chess than just playing good moves, Lucky. Well, hey, I'm just trying to educate the chat. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what what I'm saying, of course, like I'm I'm not I'm not joking though. Like that actually, psychology. Magnus does use that to to his advantage as much as he can, and um, and he, he does study the players in their games, what what really what they do well and what they don't do well. So it's it's I'm actually not joking. Like I'm pretty confident that Magnus did this because of psychology. What's the prediction for the second um, game? Magnus has white. Is he going to try to win again? I mean, he's just going to do what he does and just get try to get a position. I don't know what Wesley will do, though. Because I think, actually, I, th I think Wesley has to go for broke in game two. I think he has to go for broke. Try to get something messy already because, again, you know, it's, it's getting it's, it's getting late very early for Wesley, especially if he loses this first game with, with the white pieces. This is just over. So how do you... Uh, yeah. I mean, somehow you just get the knight back, I think. Or you get the pawn... Yeah, just get the knight to e7, I think. And then you just push b5. Yep. Wow, it felt like Wesley didn't move anything for the past 15 moves. Like, since he yeah. traded the queens... Yeah. By the way, since chat is asking me, they're saying... You know, we said this yesterday. The difference between today and yesterday is that this is the first game and it's a loss with the white pieces. That's actually the big difference. It's that yesterday, when he lost the first game, he, he got the white piece in game two. When you lose with white, it's very difficult to win with black. Winning with black is much harder than winning with white. You have to take a lot of risks, go for something that's, you know, more complicated where you take chances. And, and so um, that's why the situation is significantly different. And not much more to uh, to say. It feels about this position. Uh, mm -hmm. Can Wesley create anything? How will he create counterplay? I don't see it. But yeah, he's got to hope for some miracle draw. But again, the pawns are stuck. Just rook b8, knight e7, and. I was actually wondering if Magnus will find some way to showboat and, and get knight and bishop versus the king. But I guess he can't because it's an h3 pawn. There's no way that the, the black, that white can win all these, uh, all the pawns. Knight and bishop versus king, wow. <laughs> just, just a flex. Okay, but I think Wesley will resign before then, right? Or Yeah, it's, it's unfortunately over here. What Tough. a start. What a start. But yeah, the, the, like that that's the thing, you guys, is that it's much, with the white pieces, you have more control over the direction of the game in a different way than you do with the black pieces. So that's why it's going to be very, very tough for, uh, for for Wesley. Which, by the way, also, just to be... Since you weren't, since you weren't on with me yesterday, Levy, uh, I was explaining this in chat. In the final sequence of matches, you always want to have the white pieces in the last game of the match. So, um, so for example, in this match, see Magnus starts with black, then he's white, black, white game four. You always want to have white in that last game because you, you have more control over the direction of the game to go for broke if you need to. 
Okay, that makes sense. And that's why yesterday Wesley had it good. He had it, you know, he was down 2-1, he got white, and he was able to actually... Exactly, yes. Yeah, and when he lost the first game, that was with black, so he had white, he had two whites, one black. Here he's losing with white, so he's one white and two blacks remaining. Well, the next one will be interesting. Okay, has Wesley, is he resigned? Or he just... Uh, he might just be tanking. I, I, I mean, but yeah, it's over. Just B4, B3. Also, just to be clear, you guys, they get the same number of colors. There's nothing unfair about it. You get two white games, two black games. Yep. But the order of the games matters a lot. It definitely does. And Magnus gets the choice because he is the highest seed. Yeah, this is just... Oh, no. We do get some moves. Um... You push, this there's rook d8 and rook b8, I guess, right? But then b2. If you marry me, I will pay your bills, take you to the nicest <laughs> restaurants around the globe, give you love, wash you dishes and clothes, hug you every day, kiss your cheeks. Man, this is not the star Wesley wanted. Feet, are you in? <laughs> Do you think Wesley's confident against Magnus, given that he beat him in, like, the Fisher Random World Championship and... Yeah, I mean, he definitely should be confident. Um... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got a funny dono. Um... This is it. I think he'll resign here. Yeah, because you just go C5, C4, C3, C2, and if White tries to bring the king over, you'll lose the pawn in F5. Yeah, Wesley will resign here. Maybe not. Okay, C5, C4, and C3. Wesley didn't move anything besides a rook or a king for the last 20 moves, it feels like. Well, he only had rooks and kings, really. But yeah, I mean, basically, what this game hinged on is it hinged on... Um, it hinged on Wesley in the opening, not not really going for the throat with this G4, G4, F4 sort of ideas that he really had to. And I'm not even saying that it was great, but he needed to be much more aggressive. And uh, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. And it's over, yeah. Wesley loses game one, very rough. Hikaru, hey, that donation sounds uh, like a pretty good arrangement, I just have to say. Uh huh. I got a okay. I got a screenshot of it. Which of those things would you want more? Your bills paid, nicest restaurants, wash washing your dishes and clothing, or uh, massaging your shoulders and feet? Which one of those sounds the best? Uh, well, I I had a, I had a very nice massage last night, so I think that answers the question. Well, on that note, uh, I'm gonna grab a snack. <laughs> um. <laughs> Chat, uh, you know, you guys, uh, you guys have a good, uh, quick break. I'll be back in a second. Me too. All right. I'll be right back, you guys. All right. All right. All right. What's up, chat? Uh, big shout out to Julian Jay-Z for the prime. Kronger for the prime. Burn my best note for the prime. I am the chaplain for the prime. Gremlin for the prime. Del Dioso with the prime. Gantor with the prime. Thank you to MD Co with the prime. One with the prime. Andreas Lars with the Prime, the Clemson with the tier one, So Dozio with the Prime, Martin Sale with the Prime, Nico Adamski with the tier one, Kulak with the Prime, ZRHS with the Prime, Squid Bounce with the Prime, Addy Gaming with the Prime, 20 Spawn with the tier one, thank you so much, thank you to Blurry G for three months, Ace Line with the three, Going to Go Mad for the 14th, Password is Taco for the 17th, R4, uh, 4 FR3E for the five, Luke Stem with the, with the, uh, with the um, three months, thank you to G Wizard for the three, thank you to It's the Bow for the four, Video Game Pianist for the six months, thank you so much, thank you to iPork Queen for the seven, Bar of Soap for the five, thank you to Stevis for the eight, thank you to Poop Chaka with the five, uh, thank you so much, you guys, appreciate it. Thank you to Yorzi with the prime, thank you to Wake Kid with the, with, the, uh, with the prime, thank you to Pink Penny with the prime, so Gio with the prime, Magic Hippie with the prime, um, thank you to Puff HD with the prime, Cat 5R with the prime, thank you to Big Pink Gaming with the prime, HB8 SSB Lulu with the prime, MP with the prime, thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I'm actually gonna make some more water and get a little more coffee. Give me one second, you guys. Hikaru, you inspired my community to uh, to also sub with Prime. People are uh, discovering they have Primes now. Oh, very nice. Give me one time. Yeah, fine. That's like a world record number of Twitch Primes. Oh my god. 
<laughs> man, you got like a hundred subs in one round? Man, we, we have to hope for more uh, games. Maybe you deflated Toaster with the Prime thing. Thank you to CSD at Google for the Prime. Thank you to, to go to the Plague with the Prime. Thank you to Lord Star Art with the Prime. Thank you to KT Coffee with the Prime. Thank you so much. Thank you to S4 Tour with the Prime. So, is there like a correlation with more primes because it's holiday season? What what is going on? Like, thank you to Agent with the prime, DJ Trailer with the prime, <laughs> thank you to Alexander LT with the prime, <laughs> Supersonic Mike with the prime, Darth Neilis the Mask with the prime. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you to Skip to be with the prime. One sec. Thank you, Semrock with the Prime Fireman. Let me just get through the Prime. Thank you, Deathmaker OG with the Prime. Fat Magus with the Prime. Thank you, Jimmy Ryan Bolt with the Prime. Thank you to uh, James Key with the Prime. T. Rob McKell with the Prime. Grigor Refugee with the Prime. Thank you to uh, Mark D. Stuffer with the Prime. Blakeson with the Prime. Beyond Ass with the Prime. Flex and Licks with the Prime. Frostman with the Prime. Poor Black with the Tier 1. Thank you, uh, Mr. Glock with the Prime. And Edin with the Prime. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, Levy. Thank you, Riddick with the Prime. <laughs> wow. No, no. I mean, I. I muted myself for a second and I and I said uh, I told my chat, "Yo, you bastards, where are my primes?" And like 20 people Twitch Prime sub. It was like, "Hikaru, why do we even do? Hey, if you guys have Amazon Prime connected to your Twitch, let's just angrily tell them to sub with Prime. I mean, it seems like the way to go." Like, exactly. Um, yeah. Thank you to uh, thank you to Alar Lawrence with the Prime, Super Dry Snap Prime, Berto with the Prime, <laughs> Jules with the Prime, Ross with the Tier One. Why are you guys Lure thinking Prime. Hikaru got to choose between one or another? I, uh, I will say this, you know, before this tournament, it's yeah. really diffi it's really difficult to sustain a channel sub like subscriptions when you're not there. Like when it's just me and Anna, it was it seemed like always like hard to do. This was the first time that all of our channels did extremely well, despite you. I mean, you don't stream when you play this thing, right? For like a week. Yeah, so. thank you to Forrest Ivor with the Prime, Go TV with the Prime, Chance with the Prime. <laughs> the Prime just keep rolling, Levy. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Thank you you, you just... Prime. You just you just let them rock, man. They're they want they're happy to support you. Okay, they don't yeah. sub to get their name read out. I mean, they maybe they do. I don't know. <laughs> if you like wink at the at the camera and say their name, maybe it, like they'll sub more. Who knows? Thank you, it's Mad for the Prime. Thank you, to Ombre with the Prime. Zerma with the Prime. Strider with the Prime. Jambu with the Prime. Thank you, to Swagetti with the Prime. Zats with the Prime. Danny Tide with the Prime. Shuku with the Prime. Fletcher with the Prime. Jeffo with the Prime. Dina with the Prime. Thank you so much, you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you to Oshiver with the free. James Dash for the five months. Big shout out to James Dash, by the way. That is, of course, um, the league league Dash from uh, from the from the desk. Um, big shout out to James Dash. Need a river float for the eleven. My dad Mark with the two. Jitsun with the seven and Stinker T with the uh, with the with the three months. Need a little boot with the, with the prime. Thank you to being grab with tier one. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Um, okay, Levy. So where were we? Very very tough, right? Very very difficult. Oh, at this one. What happened? I just need to add the scores. The same scores yesterday. Actually, it's very easy. I, just, I don't need. To, I don't need to. Need to. So, all right. Oh, thank you to uh, thank you to Shifty Clips for the five gifts as well. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. So, love you. Um. Yeah. So, uh. Actually, you know what? Let's talk about some other things. Um. Thank you to No No I Am for the five star eleven. I'm just gonna get some subs. Um, that's that's uh, what I me, me me too. I'm just writing them hearts in the chat, and I'm hoping they're okay with it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So once again, thank you so much everybody for the tier one. Thank you to Jay Barag with the prime, Jester with the prime, Pogalone with the prime, Michael Leg Bluezer with the prime. Thank you to uh, Dying Spear with the prime. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Thanks everybody. Uh, thank you so much for all the primes. The primes are still flowing. Really appreciate it. Let's, let's get back to the, um, let's get back to the, the match situation. So, very difficult, um, situation for Wesley here. I think, I think we're, I think it's going to be interesting to see what Wesley does here. Um, like, I, I, I feel, you know, I, I think... One thing that's really important to note is that in this situation with Wesley being down one game, I think he has to make a choice. Does he really want to go for it with Black here and play something offbeat, or does he kind of hope to hold this game and then potentially go for Broke in the fourth and final game? 
Are you there, Lessie? Who's Wesley talked to in between rounds? I don't know. I mean, Wesley is one of the most mysterious guys in that I don't think anyone really knows who he works with because, as I've said before, um, when uh, when he goes to tournaments, he's usually there with his stepmom um, and and or I think his stepsister as well. So, uh, so when he goes to tournaments, he doesn't usually have a trainer with him. So for that reason, it's very mysterious. Whereas, like you know, if I if I if I see Levon at a tournament, he always has someone with him. You know, I always have someone with me. Magnus has people with him. Everybody has um, everybody has people with them who are who, like trainers. And no no one else um, quite does what Wesley does. So no one really knows. No one really knows. Wow. That's so, actually yeah. fascinating. And he he's he's gotten that that high, huh? Did you see his house tour video? No, I didn't. So like. They, they, they uploaded different videos like asking the players questions such as would you rather have a bad relationship or bad internet um that was a fascinating one bad relationship yeah uh a, 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 three of them chose a bad relationship and good internet whereas like anish chose you know good relationship and bad internet for obvious reasons oh, oh you're saying oh I, I i didn't have to answer these questions so maybe maybe while we're on the break i'll think i'll try to answer that one um so would you rather have a bad relationship and good internet or, or a good relationship with bad internet? Is that the question? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, obviously, I, 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 would, I would obviously have good internet and a bad relationship. <laughs> That's what Magnus said, and as he said it, he looked over at somebody, so I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, inter internet is life. <laughs> Use the good internet to find a better relationship. I don't know, like... Oh my god, love you almost just made me spit coffee out of my mouth. Oh god. It would have been it would have been a, a top ten TSM uh, facility moment. <laughs> oh, oh my man. god. I can't I can't believe you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <all right. laughs> um okay. So yeah, um Wow. Oh, wow, wow. All right. So in in this game, I think um, it, I think I think Magnus is gonna just do, gonna do what he's he's done before. I expect him to actually play E4 again. I play E4 and be a little bit more like dry and slower than going for something insane like he did yesterday. Well, the the point I was gonna make with the whole like questions thing is that Wesley has a giant house. I mean, he probably lives somewhere pretty remote, but mm -hmm. he has a massive house. So when you upgrade. To you know, a mansion with all this new, newfound uh, success. Will we get a house tour? Well, Levy, I uh, this is something that that like I, I guess it, are, are you staying? Let me ask. Let me phrase this a different way. Are you gonna stay in New York or not? Like, um, for I mean, probably I have to for the next year. Okay. But but long term, probably not. Okay, because what what you'll learn, Levy, is if you're in states like New York or California, um, money doesn't go very far. Whereas if you go to a place like Texas or Nevada um, or even like Tennessee, I, I actually I wrote I'm just naming all all the states with no state income tax. Um, if you go to states like those ones, um, if you go to states like th those three states, you'll see that you can buy a pretty big house for a lot less money. Like what what you'll get um, for 500 square feet in New York City uh, goes a lot further when you get outside of um, when you get outside of out of New York. And so for me, since I'm in California, I mean. Uh, I, I doubt I'll be buying a mansion. I would have to, like, there would have to be, like, a movie. I'd have to sell the rights to it for $45 million in order to be able to buy that mansion. But if you say, okay, that's fair. What about Vegas? Did you live in Vegas? Yeah. Yeah. No, because I would never live in Vegas because, um, I, I, would, I would end up just sitting, I would, end, I would probably stop streaming. I would end up just sitting, sitting all day playing poker in one of the casinos. And that would... You could stream it. You could IRL... I, oh. I would think now it's probably much tighter after after um oh, after fair. that cheating cheating scandal. I, I bet it's really. I, I bet they're probably really strict on that stuff now. Um, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Um, no, it's true. I mean, in cities like New York, you can buy a two bedroom apartment for over a million dollars. So mm -hmm. yeah, the prices are pretty insane here. <clears throat> you would stay in. Uh, near near there or you would move to somewhere else in LA, in, uh, in california california is big so i mean i i don't like northern california not to be political but i i think all the people who say bad things about san francisco san francisco and the bay area they're 100 percent right i do not 
think that's I, I think things are going downhill very fast there. I think Southern California is quite good, but Northern California is uh, yeah, no. Just no. San Diego, San um No, San Diego is uh, is great. I love San Diego. San Diego will always have a very special place in my heart too because I uh, because I won my first US championship in the 2005 United States Chess Championship it was held in La Jolla. Um, that, that was the first time I won the US Championship. I was 17 years old, and that, that I'll always have a lot of nostalgia for that event. How'd you celebrate? Um, I didn't really celebrate. I think I celebrated by playing Blitz in the lobby with uh, Nick DeFermian um, and a couple of the other, other Grand Masters. That's how I celebrated. We, we stayed up all night playing Blitz after the event. That does sound like a chess party. A lot of fun. I mean, um, I was 17. I mean, I loved chess back then. Like, that, that was my life. I just loved playing as everybody. Like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's let's get back to the chess. So we have... Oh, so Wesley decides to be solid here. Very interesting decision. Wesley repeats what he did in the game the previous time. Um, wow, I'm very surprised by this. Because because now what's because now Levy we get to the situation that I was talking about where like a lot of people were wondering why I made the quick draw in the third game with um why I made the quick draw with Wesley in the third game and I, I put everything riding on one game with the white piece mm -hmm. and so now Wesley is essentially trying to do the same thing I mean this isn't a dead draw to be fair but Wesley's trying to do something similar and um and, and so I'm I'm very I I don't know I don't think it's the right strategy like I, I was thinking about it more um more the other day because against Magnus for example when I played him in the tour final the last day I was down and I um and I think against Magnus in the third game with Black I tried to play a Sicilian and complicate matters we drew the game I suffered but we drew and then the fourth game I won forcing the, the epic Blitz and Armageddon um but I think in a situation against Magnus I I, I feel like you you feel you, you should you should try to play as many games as you can um versus putting it all in one game but we'll, we'll see. Especially because here I think it's a little bit unpleasant, potentially, for, uh, for, for, for Wesley. Um, okay, but there's a difference. Because yesterday Magnus played bishop e3, and today he played rook d1. Is there any mm -hmm. substantial difference? Or why is he thinking now? I mean, did he not expect rook c8 or something? Maybe it's not the main move? I, I don't know. Or maybe it's just trying to remember what exactly the, the setup was. But what else could have happened after rook d1 that's not rook c8? Knight b6? I'm gonna stop my music for a second. I'm just gonna stop it right now. Um, uh, like Bishop E2, Knight B6. I, I mean, I think Black is doing okay here, um, but I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, the reason that I also don't like this is because I think you're hoping for a draw, but it's not a stable draw. Like that, that's the problem. It's not a, it's not a stable draw. We'll see. If there are more viewers than um than than, than clearly turning off the music, right? If there are less viewers. Um. Anyway, uh, so, so, so as, as I was saying, um, this isn't a dead draw, and I think you're going to suffer a little bit. So that's why I'm not convinced that this is the, the right decision. Um, so, so we'll see. Uh, yesterday, it, okay, like it felt like Magnus tricked Wesley in the endgame. It didn't actually feel like he was outplayed from start to finish. Correct. So, but I mean, Magnus does that against everybody. That's what Magnus is, is better than anyone else in the world at doing is, is in end games finding these little little ideas, these little tricks. Got it. By the way, guys, if anybody's confused, this is literally game one from yesterday. Um, and the only difference is that on move 13, White played Rook D1 instead of Bishop E3. Correct. That that is correct. Yeah, he played Bishop E3 instead of Rook D1. Um. What do you know about this CD5, CD4 thing? Because when I was looking in the database, CD4 in this position is like very new, and it, it's being played a lot by these GMs. How does how did this happen? Like how did who was the first? Or... So I think it fits in the style with a, a play which has, was introduced by Vladimir Kramnik. So Kramnik started playing this Berlin defense in his 2000 match against Gary Kasparov, right? This uh, this e4 e5 knight f3 knight six b5. I'm just gonna show it on the board for my chat. This this whole end game line. Um, with you play you play you play a position where basically there, there are pieces that come off the board very early mm -hmm. so this is this is like what Kramnik started in 2000 and Kramnik kind of then started introducing these ideas with c5 and trying to play these sort of positions where you exchange a lot of pieces early on in the game with black even in d4 opening and um and, and so that's why it's become popular because even though white is probably better in these end games 
There's so few pieces on the board that the piece play is pretty straightforward, and generally with correct play, you're going to be able to make a draw. So I blame Kramnik for that. Okay. Fair. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, like, C when I looked at CD4... Uh, Wesley obviously played it a few times. Uh, Liam played it. Liam played it against. Liam played it twice in the prelims. Uh, yeah, it's because basically the point is you 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 um you, you you're maybe slightly worse, but there just there aren't a lot of pieces on the board, so it's very hard for White to avoid liquidation basically. And and that's that's something that Kramnik really kind of introduced was uh was this idea of playing positions where you get pieces off the board very early, like just pieces come off the board. So even if there's a slight issue, like you have bad pawns or your king is weak, as long as there are a lot of pieces off the board early, then um then it's playable. And I'm, I'm going to give, just to show my chat, another example. There's also the semi tarash with knight takes d5. And this yeah. is also something that Kramnik introduced where, um, where basically white has a center, but already you've traded off one bishop and one knight, so it becomes very straightforward and not very hard to play. And even though white is maybe slightly better, it's very hard to crack. And this is what something that Kramnik has really kind of introduced, the notion of one little, one little issue that you have in the position, but there's so few forces on the board, it's hard to take advantage of. So, so, so that, I think the whole initiation or the, the process of chess evolving to where people are doing this with the black pieces is specifically to try and try and play positions where there are a lot of pieces off the board. What actually is the main line of the semi tarash nowadays? Like, how does white set up? I think it's what I did basically. It's like bishop d3 and rook c1 or rook e1. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of inter iterations. Who is 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 Dominguez the leading practitioner? Who is the? I mean, Wesley's like... also played that. Dominguez has played that. Um, someone else has played that. Kramnik was obviously the biggest practitioner for a long time. Um, I I don't know. I mean, there there are a lot of guys who play it though. Vei also plays it as well. So yeah, a lot, a lot of guys play it. Okay, Wesley plays a6, which is a strange move to me. Very strange. So I guess just what he one, wants b5? But like one move difference from yesterday, and Wesley already is like out of his comfort zone, it seems. Well, this this also comes back to what I was saying earlier about the stylistic choice. Like, this is the problem. When you think about the styl stylistic choice, Magnus digs these positions. He loves endgame. Like he it's it's what it's what he I mean he's probably objectively best at. But he just loves these maneuvering positions, looking for these deep long-term ideas. And um and so like for Magnus he loves this. Now if I had this position as white, I would not be in love with it because I just am not crazy about these positions. Um but for Magnus it's great. So I think this is why stylistically it's a very bad matchup for Wesley because he prepped this opening and against most people he, he, in the end game, I mean, he feels very comfortable. But Magnus, of course, being being the greatest end game player of our, I mean, probably ever, frankly, uh, when he gets these small advantages, uh, it's just very unpleasant to match up against. Also, you guys. Okay, so here, one last thing. Here's some. Or go ahead. Go ahead. So here's here's some stuff for you. Um, the best move here, uh, for Magnus, like let's say he plays Bishop B3. The computer at first was trying to tell me that the best move for black after bishop e3 is to go king d8. Wow. Wow. Walking into this pin to try to go bishop c5. Are you so sure king d8 g4 isn't really good for white? It, that's what it's starting to calculate. h6, h4, bishop c5. Yeah, yeah it's, it could get wild. I don't like this at all for Wesley. I mean, it, it's fine objectively, but I don't like it. Yeah, and, and I think Wesley's feeling my mug too. He's, he's definitely feeling what's, the, what's written on my mug. The struggle is very real. The struggle is real. <laughs> so, uh, uh, let's, let's, let's see. I assume Magnus will play Bishop E3 here. I'm trying to figure out, okay, so let's say Wesley goes King, King F7. So that's the human move. To, oh wait, but you can't because then there's Knight E4. Yeah, so king e8? Yeah, this this is tricky. Um oh wait, actually oh. Hey Carl, what's the difference between king e8 and king d8? Um 
I don't I don't know actually I'm not sure. Um I, I'm I'm not sure. Maybe king eight you go rook c1 and you have no bishop c5 because of knight a4 and you play on the c file towards the rook on c8. That might be what it is. That, that, that's gotta be what it is. I, th I'm really surprised how how shocked Wesley is at the position. Like one small difference. How did that happen? Yeah, but I mean, this is kind of the point that I that I'm making. Like, I, I feel like if you if you make a wrong move, you, you're gonna end up much worse here. And if you're precise, it'll be a draw. You won't suffer. But if you make one wrong move, you're gonna be suffering and struggling. And this is after the first game where Wesley already lost. So I think it's very, very, um, very difficult here. Yeah, so he plays bishop e3, obviously, as expected. So basically what white wants here is to play rook c1, play on the c file, or go g4, g5, remove the defender of the pawn on e4, and make that knight. Huh. Yeah, chat, it, it says snuggle, I get it. I'm sorry, I, I misread it, sorry. Um. <laughs> so, one interesting thing... Take a mm -hmm. look here. Um, the way Magnus has played this two times with Bishop C4 very quickly. Yeah. That hasn't ever been seen. Like, apparently the main line in this position has always been Bishop G5. And then Anish played Bishop D2 in Long Castle against Liam. Ah, but okay. I, he played Bishop D2. Okay, interesting. Jake exits just Magnus completely... This is completely his own, real, like, thing. Bishop C4 real, castles and then... Yeah, so that's I, maybe I, why West... Go ahead. I was going to say that's why Wesley might be struggling. Because there's no... It looks natural, but it's apparently never been played, so... Right, I think this is probably a deep concept where basically the reason it hasn't been played before is because you're just down a pawn. Whereas Magnus is playing this because his assumption is that it's a weak pawn on e4, and long term with two bishops you can just play this endgame forever. So I think it's a great, um, it, it's a great, uh, it's a great concept by Magnus, I really like it. This could get very ugly, right? You saying mm -hmm. g4 is also an idea, wow. Yeah, I mean, King D8, again, I mean, like, a computer would just play this and laugh in your face. For a human to go King D8 here is very weird, because the idea is always to go King F7. King F7 and bring the bishop in this way. Trying to go King D8 and walk into a pin, it's just not how we learn the game, game of chess, that you don't walk into, you don't walk into pin. It's just not how you play chess. By the way, there the idea is uh, to go Rook C6 and King C7. So if he finds that, um... Yeah, then he'll be in great shape. You know what the crazy thing here is? Besides g4, white has other ideas. White has another idea here to go rook d4, which is wild, and then try to take and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, rook no, I mean, it's... Yeah, it's, uh... It's a, it's a tough position here. It's, it's a tough position for Wesley to play. Slightly worse, very hard to come up with the right ideas, and I, I'm just... I'm not optimistic about his chances here. I'm really not. It just it doesn't look doesn't look great. Is Wesley the kind of guy who? I mean, I guess it's a silly question. I was gonna say, is is Wesley the kind of di like guy if he's already down? Uh, well, yesterday they tried actually, but if he's gonna be down two zero, mm -hmm. is he gonna go insane or is he just gonna play solid? Oh, he's gonna go insane because he has to win. I know. I just I I I don't know. Like I don't play Wesley, so I'm saying like, would anybody just go insane, play whatever like crazy opening, or uh, will he just still try to be like stubborn and solid? <laughs> Sorry, Lefty. ETS? <laughs> yeah, I just got a donut. Someone was not. Someone was not not happy. Um, someone was not happy with uh with with my coffee. Oh. But they donated money? Yeah, because they think that I don't know Italian espresso, which is which is fine, you guys. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with instant coffee. Like, just like six bucks for my, my El Clasico from, from Walmart. It's all good. Okay, so Wesley does go King D8 because here it makes sense with Rook C6. To play Rook C6 and King D8 makes sense because now King C8, Bishop C5 is logical. Playing it right away was a little bit weird, but um, he does it now. And now I guess we'll see what, what Magnus does here. I'm actually really curious about G4 or G4, G5 here. It looks like the best move, yeah. G4, and then if black plays H6, you play H4. Right, agreed. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I think it is pretty good. I mean, black is obviously fine here, of course, but... Uh...
Sorry, I'm just turning my music down. Roger, that's the Eight to seven months. The engine thinks six or seven different options for white are all zero, 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 which just means that it doesn't know, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think a G4 makes sense. F3 maybe. I guess F3 doesn't make sense because just bishop c5 flattens the game. If you lose it to bishops, black is always completely fine. What about F3 on the last move? Mm -hmm. After rook c6. After rook c6 what? F3. Without bishop c5 possible. Yeah, that, that made sense. I think Magnus didn't do it probably because of king e8 and bishop c5 here. That's, that's my guess. Okay. Yeah, that trade. Yeah. Uh, by the way, since so someone just donated three bucks and there's so many people watching, I actually played a little bit of chess with Mr. Beast last night. We were talking about chess, about about YouTube. Um, so I, I did play with Mr. Beast last night. Of course, I, I didn't record it or anything, but I did play with him last night. So, okay. Um, all right. So. You can't. You, now chat's going to go insane. I mean, well, I, I mean, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so I, I was I played I played with Mr. Beast last night. Um, he's pretty new to the game. Um, to, I, of course, I'm not going to record it. Record it. It's not illegal, you guys. You can't record a conversation even if it's on Discord with someone without their permission. Actually, I think it depends on the state. But yeah, we're not going to do that. Um, it's not a federal law. Wait. Yeah. It... Well, on on the phone, it's definitely a federal law. Hundred percent is federal law, isn't it? I don't know. Maybe. I I I mean, in any case, you didn't do it, so. Yeah, Chad, deep breath from everybody, yeah? Yeah, but I mean, no, of course, of course. I mean, there's the thing to do that, totally. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, all right. Um, yeah. Okay, so where were we? Uh, where were we? Let's get back to the game. So, so yeah, like, F3 right away, Levy, you were saying? I, I, I actually like that idea, but I think Magnus and Duke's the same thing. King D8 or King E8 was Bishop D5. Because conceptually, if you ever lose two bishops, the bishops are, are so strong long term, they control so many diagonals that you can never really have winning chances. So I think Magnus just assumed black moved the king and trades bishops, and that's why he rejected it pretty much immediately. Okay, bishop d4 is interesting. Uh, so he wants to take and uh, is it take and take on e4 or take? Right, what but is this is getting a little bit iffy. Can't black go bishop d6 now? He can't snuggle Mr. Beast. It's very real. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, maybe he missed that. That looks quite dangerous, doesn't it? I mean, dangerous is wrong, wrong way of saying it, but how is White ever actually winning this pawn back? Wait, this actually looks strangely complicated. And he plays it. Yeah, yeah, this is actually quite dangerous. Because how are you ever winning this pawn back now? I guess Miss Bishop D6 maybe just blocking the, the rook. Yeah, I think he assumed there was some tactic here. Now it's game on. Now it's definitely game on. Uh. So Magnus, uh, one of those other questions that they that they asked the um, players was, mm -hmm. uh, "What do you do when you lose games?" Uh, and uh, Magnus said that he he he, he he would break stuff. So what do you think got broken yesterday? Um, I don't I don't know like. I think that's, I mean, actually breaking something, I, I, I doubt that that happens, but probably smashing a desk, slamming a desk or doing these things definitely happens. I know for myself it has happened too. Um, so, like, I mean, I, I in the old days, I I would take the mouse and I would take it and just throw it across the room. That was, that's what I would do in the old days. Um, I, I, I would do that. But now we can't. It's, it's sponsored mouse. But also we've... Uh... I mean, the, the mice that I threw against the wall back then, it was still Logitech. Um, but, oh, okay, but well. yeah, but, but the thing is, like, uh, yeah, I remember <laughs> the old days I would do that. Also, I, I had these, these Bose headphones, I remember, and um, and I think it's when I was in St. Louis, and I had an apartment, like, I just an apartment, normal apartment, but, like, the way it was structured, I had my desk really close to the door, and then, I, so there was a lot of room to the living room, and I remember, I, I forget who it was against, I lost, like, a Blitz game or a Bullet game on time, and I was so mad that I took my headphones off, and I literally threw them all the way across the room and um the the padding broke so um yeah <laughs> yeah so so that's probably what i've done that's the worst that i've done the most uh intense anger that i ever got uh, online mm -hmm. it was not even about chess it would oh, be about okay. like some video games or something okay um, 
but yeah it's 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 fun to look back at like now now that you're older um now if i'm ever like playing a video game and i have like very angry toxic teammates it makes me laugh more than anything like, usually. i can still get angry i can still get angry and take the mouse and slam it like on the desk not on the desk but slam it on the mouse but like take it and just like bam right slam it really hard right down like i, I can i can still do that from time to time not often but i can still do it but usually only bullet, right? Like I yeah, yeah, only for bullet because bullet brings out the basis instinct in everyone, and um, natu your natural your natural competitiveness, you know, like it just it really shows in a different way. That's why I don't like playing bullet on stream because like bullet is the, the one thing when you play bullet, it brings out those like those aggressive like natural like instincts, you know, to get angry and and, and everything. Uh. Mag no move yet from Magnus. I think he he must have missed Bishop D6, Hikaru. Like it's the only explanation. Yeah, he definitely missed it. Now what Magnus is gonna do is he's trying to look for a bailout to just make a draw. And the reason I say this is dangerous, you guys, is because Black is threatening to go Bishop to E5, not right away, but in like a move or two this time to play like A3, King E7, just random moves. And if Black ever gets his Bishop E5 moving, the Knight on F6 is always guarding the extra pawn, and now you're gonna lose one of your bishops. So like you'll never actually win back this double pawn um, on D4. So that's why this is quite dangerous now for uh, for, for Magnus. And he, I think now he's just looking for a way to bail out. How does he bail out is yeah. the question. Mm -hmm. What what does he do? Well, uh, chat is chat chat like when, when when I talk about bullet, sorry to get off topic just very briefly. Yeah, when you when you play bullet, it brings out that basic instinct to drive 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 us towards like violence. Not towards a person, but towards like towards whatever is causing us to, to lose the game. Or the, or the person? Why why not? So, true, true, maybe. Um, anyway, all right. Um, oh, the guy's still here, by the way. The the guy who uh, said what? Wow, who said Wesley uh, shouldn't be GM? Wow, good stuff. Good, stuff, good stuff. good content here. Very nice content. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Magnus here. I, I, he's probably he's probably looking for a way to bail out. Definitely, he's looking for a way to bail out here and just make it draw. Which is why he's seen for a really long time. He's looking, trying to figure out what's the best way to get an end game with the most practical chances of making it. Wrong. So it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I mean, I, I think I think F3 is probably the best move, but Magnus still has to calculate this line with F, F, Bishop F4, Rook A1, E5, Bishop F2, E3, Bishop E1. I think that's probably a draw. Ooh, he blunders. He's blundered. He's playing Knight A4. Why that's a, that's well my I I mean I guess I'm, it's, I'm... yeah I mean I guess after rook c1 rook c1 king e7 black's much better but still the knight b6 six I I actually I disagree with you lovey I I I, I Jim, like it quite Jim, a lot from a practical done. standpoint what of getting an end game where it. technically it should be a draw a real... no. so, okay um... so knight you're saying knight b6 takes takes I'll play knight what d5 probably. Yeah, and then just bishop d4 or bishop e3. It's does just black one. Does black want to trade of bishops or rooks in that end game? And he wants bishops. If white can keep the two bishops, white will always have good drawing chances. You always want to exchange, um, exchange the bishop. Okay, so here's a question: How huge would it be if Wesley won this game? How how horrible would it be for Magnus? Oh, I mean, it would be. I mean, he's still still in the match, but yeah, I think if he loses this game, there's a real chance that Wesley can win this match. Because Magnus is definitely going to be on tilt. But I, I, I think Knight B6 will be played here. Just to try and force an end game where there are good practical drawing chances. Okay, so he goes G3, reasonable. So I think it's just an idea to stop Bishop F4. And he still wants Knight B6 at the right moment. Or maybe you know what he wants, Levy, is maybe he just doesn't want knight d5, knight f4 being being played after knight b6, where you hit the bishop and then you go knight f4. That might be the idea as well. Like he's worried about knight d5 hitting the bishop and then coming to f4. That's my guess. Is Magnus still playing the most practical, best move in the like position, or is he is he still? I mean, I don't know, because he's down five minutes and it doesn't. Like, it feels like it's slipping a little bit, but 
Wesley has to play like the right ideas, you know? Like, yeah, I mean, I think I think what Magnus is doing is trying to get, he's trying to angle it for an end game where it'll be Rook and Bishop of opposite colors. Like if he can get one pair of Knights exchange, I think his chances of drawing this end game are very, very high. Um, that's that's what he's angling for. Whether he can get that or not is a different question. Yeah. So I mean, we'll, we'll we'll see what um what Wesley's gonna play in this position. But I mean, Wesley is better, but I still I wouldn't say that he's winning here. He's, he has chances, but it's gonna require um a, a lot of precision here, and I'm not really convinced that it's gonna be that easy to play. What are Black's candidate moves? Rook d8. Yeah, rook d8, rook d8, rook d8, rook d8 is a move. Um, yeah, rook, rook d8 is a move. Rook b8 is a move. Also, um, I don't know what else makes sense here. Actually, I'm struggling to come up with a move besides rook d8 or rook b8. Rook b8 also doesn't look very human. I know the computer likes it, but it doesn't look human. Knight e5, maybe. But I mean, knight e5 allows knight c5. Maybe that's just good for black. Ah, you rook c8. Um, but it's very. I don't know. I feel like Rook D8 is the obvious human. Rook D8 or maybe Bishop, you know, Bishop E5. You trade to go Rook D7. Um, so I would assume Rook D8 or Knight E5 are the two moves that I kind of expect. B5 is also actually a logical move too. Actually, B5 makes a lot of sense for a human as well. So yeah, I was gonna say B5, but it felt like um, you're weakening A6 a little bit, right? Like Rook C6 in some end games. I don't know. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No. Totally. Totally. You play B5. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, I, I think uh, in this position, it's it's hard for Wesley. It's hard for Wesley still. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not even convinced this is winning necessarily, but he, he, he needs to not use too much time. If he gets too long on time here, I, I don't think he's going to have enough time to try and come up with a, with a concept that, that that works. Cessna says H5. I mean, yeah, congrats. I was going to... Well, of course, I see G3. I want to go H5, but I'm trying to, you know, hold back. I don't want to... Yeah, go but H5. see, it doesn't make sense for a human, naturally, because why? what's the point? There's no attack on the H file, so you're just creating a weakness on H5. Right? Yeah, I mean, if you think about it conceptually, I mean, because you don't have queens, you don't have double rooks, so even if the H file opens up, you have no mate. So, conceptually, it doesn't feel very natural to me, also because it just creates a target for the bishop on E2. So I'm I'm a little bit I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical that that Wesley will play that. Rook d8. I don't know why he hasn't played rook d8. Because rook d8 to me looks like the human. Please. He's deep in thought. Yeah, I mean it's it's not easy to play, obviously. Um, but it's yeah it's it's gonna be interesting to see what he does because he's using a lot of time. And if time gets back to even, I think already it's gonna it's, the pressure is gonna be. Not pressure, but like the chances of creating winning chances are going to go down dramatically for West here. So I, I, I think it's it's difficult. Detroit becomes Cessna, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, tough you, position you, though. You uh, you like some some NFL, right? You you watch some NFL. Yeah. Are you watching this season? I have not. No, I mean I haven't watched anything this season. I just can't get into sports with everything. Going on, I I don't know. Like usually, I love watching sports, but I can't get into it. I just really can't get into it. Okay, so Wesley finally plays for D8. Um, maybe Knight B6 is a move here to create some knights. Uh, <laughs> Knight B6. Yeah. So when are when are you gonna get into a Super Bowl suite with uh, Kevin Hart and Jeff Bezos? Uh, probably never. What do you mean never? I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm just a chess player. I'm, I'm not. I'm Would you not, be more excited to meet Jeff Bezos or Kevin Hart? Off the I mean, record. We, off what the do you record. Mean? I mean, obviously Jeff Bezos. Like, oh, okay. That, that's fair. No, I mean, uh, Kevin Hart tell, tell, was telling a story about how he met uh, Jeff Bezos. In, uh, I mean, I, of course I would want to meet Jeff Bezos because I, I have, I have the same laugh that he has. Um, or people have told me that. So. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I thought he, I thought he was like a cyborg. I, I didn't know if he laughed. Oh. No, because I think people have tried to say that I had the rich man laugh or something. I, I, there's some video of Bezos doing like a, a rich man laugh, and people have said that I had that same kind of laugh. Oh, <laughs> um, that's fair. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. Anyway, all right. Uh, okay. So what happened? Magnus plays Bishop E3. Strange move, by the way. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really understand what it does. 
Um, I, I'm not not really understand, understanding this idea. Maybe the point is that he wants to go night somewhere. I don't know. It's interesting. Interesting move by 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 Mac playing Bishop B3. So now Bishop G5, Knight F6, and do you have Knight C5? Maybe because Bishop holds the Rook, there's no Rook C8 anymore. Yeah, but that can't you take? Sense. Can't you take? Don't C5. But I'm actually worried this could be double edge and you could lose this black too now because this is two knights versus two bishops. And even though you have one extra pawn, I think there's actually yeah. real risk. I'm not saying that you're going to lose it, but I think there's actually risk that, that white could maybe win that. Oh, but, but it H6 happened. It happened. So h6, uh, will Magnus go to. Wait, actually, he has to take, no? I mean, how can he go to d2? Isn't there a tactic somehow? No? Uh, no, I think the bishop holds all the squares. In an endgame like this, does Black want traded rooks? Um, I don't think so because of the pawn structure. I don't think so. I think the way that Black can win this game is keeping rooks on and getting like a knight before d3. It's so, like bishop c1, knight d4 looks very strong. Um, bishop d2, I just realized there's also maybe e3 here. Bishop e3 takes, takes two. I don't know if that's winning or not, but I mean, I'm, I'm really surprised by the way Magnus has played this. Okay, so he goes bishop c1. So I like knight b4 here. I think knight b4 is a very good for for West. Oh, knight b4 maybe just rook c4, knight e2, bishop e3, and it's not the easy to play. So it's still tricky. Hey, uh, people telling me that Sessa is saying this is uh, over minus two advantage for black, which means it's lost. Right? I mean, it's uh, just... Probably, yeah. Pro yeah, considering that it's knights against bishop, it's definitely losing, yeah. Because there's no because like, fortress in, or optical or anything. Inherently, action. and you, have you heard that engines give eval for two bishops like there's like an inherent bonus for two bishops um that makes sense yeah i mean yeah, i like wasn't I've... familiar with it but yeah that that does make sense yeah uh Wojciech, who played on the new york marshals polish gm mm -hmm. like i when I, whenever i was like working with him he was always like yeah engine says this but it's because one side has two bishops so i didn't actually know that was a thing but really okay i wasn't fam familiar with that either Sessa wants the knight to land on f3 how, how does the knight land on f3 D75? Right, but D7, I assume white just goes rook C4, no? Uh-huh. Okay, so Matt, so Wesley does play knight B4, so I assume... Ah, uh, rook C4 is there knight D3 or something. Ah, uh, and then bishop E3, you get the knight to E5 and F3 that way, maybe? I mean, the fact that Wesley is up on time is very critical here. If Wesley was not up on time, I think his chance of winning this would be a lot... Would, would be... Um, a lot lower, but the fact that Wesley is uh, up on the clock does not bode well for Magnus at all here. When the knight was on d5, I was also looking like there's some ideas maybe to go e3 at some moment, but okay, is, this, is this the way to go here? Yeah. Whoa. Knight, oh, knight d3, you have bishop c3? Wow, okay, this is uh, interesting by Magnus. Hmm. Very interesting. I don't think this this looks losing to me. Yeah, it's losing, losing endgame. Now he has to lose. He has to lose it, and right, he has to win this, it. This looks losing to me. I mean, I, I don't know. Because if he could trade the e e4 pawn for the f3 pawn, I think he would actually have very good drawing chance. But I don't think he can ever trade the, the, this pawn off because on f3 block will always go e3. So here's the thing about Sesse, like I've I've analyzed end games on it before, mm -hmm. and it um it will show eval, but if you look at the moves. Oh, but he blundered, he blundered. Now F3. Oh, he doesn't do. I thought I thought actually after A3 Knight 3 F3 maybe was playable. Because E3, you just take the pawn. I th I think Magnus was a huge chance there. Because now F3 there's knight C5 and you hit the pawn of B3. Sorry, so go ahead, Levy, what were you saying? I was just saying that, like, sometimes Sessi gives an eval, mm -hmm. but the moves, it doesn't actually give any progress. But in this position, there it's possible, obviously, to make progress. But I've seen endgames, it's like minus four, but it's a draw. So yeah. it doesn't adjust. Right, and now king e5. This is this is why you had to play, you had to play f3 right away, because black couldn't use the king. Black had to black had to do something with the pawn. But now after king d6, f3, king e5, I think it's winning. I think king e5 is just actually easily winning here. Black. I mean, king e4. Ooh. Uh, I don't. Yeah, but see, I don't love this because now after f e4, knight e4, bishop c1, you're still better, but it's. Eh, I don't know. And the problem is Magnus has to take. I mean, b4 is just losing to knight e3. Your your bishop is dead. 
So you have to take on e4. I mean, maybe takes his knight b3. Is that his idea? Bishop e1, knight f6. Bishop b4. I mean, I guess we'll see. But this is, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm amazed at Magnus, the way that he played this after Bishop d6. King e5, I thought was actually very human, you guys. I thought it was a very natural human look. Um, Wesley can, uh, it's kind of funny, he can take both pawns. Take b3 and e4. Now, if I was Wesley, I would take b3 if he, if he sees right away that there's nothing really wrong with it. Because if you take e4, bishop c1, really, it's, it's, the pawns are still symmetrical and you only have this extra e pawn. It might be winning anyway, but I think it's a lot harder to prove than potentially taking on b3 and creating where you have a 2v1 on the outside of the board. So I would definitely take on b3. I mean, once he realizes that it's playable, I would definitely take on B, just for the practical chances of how how much how much play there is. Also, because after Knight B3, Bishop B1, you can go Knight D4, Bishop D1, Knight E3, I think, and your knights are just hopping every which way. So I, I think this is uh, I would take B3 for sure if I'm Western here. Hundred percent, you take B3, not even a question. Wait. Oh, what? no, no, sorry, sorry. I, I was, no, uh, okay, he takes no, B3. No, no, I, sorry, A4, A4, A4. No. Takes the wrong pawn. I mean, it's it's still probably winning with correct play, but the thing is now it's very hard to prove because now it's symmetrical pawns and the bishops can always defend it and you're not getting your king in quickly here. So it's still good, but I think it's going to be, it, it's going to require a lot of technique now, I think. Yeah, no, I know the engine says take c4 is better, you guys, but the reason that I don't like it fundamentally is because now there's not an imbalance. You just have one extra e pawn. Um, whereas if you take the other one, there's just a pure imbalance with a 2v1 on the outside of the board, which is more important than having the pawn in the center of the board that can run down. So, um, yeah, I would have take, taken b3 for sure. Just to create the imbalance, because this is probably still winning, but you ha it's not going to be easy to prove. Like, let me give you an example. Let's say b4, knight c3, bishop c4, e4, king f2. Um, it's very hard because you can't use this pawn. The pawn is blockaded here. So, I, I don't know. I would have taken b3 there. Um, this I mean, it's, feels it's still good. Very, right this feels very bad for, for uh, Mac. Like, I don't know. Like, some knight b6, knight c4 in the future. Is there just no way he can... Like, okay. Right, so now I assume bishop bishop c4, there's just b5. You don't want to get blocked that extra tempo, so probably just bishop f1 and king f2. I mean, again, this should this should be winning for black with, with all these pawns on the board, but I, I don't think it's, it's, it's privy. Bishop but, up. Well, you know what white also should try to do? Magnus should try to, try to expand on the king side and, and trade a pair of pawns or do something. That also reduces the, the chances. And, and secondly, if you could ever trade all the pawns off, then he could get the two knights versus king draw as well. Oh, Wesley is, uh, Wesley's, yeah, that's it. King e5. I think, I think Wesley's well on it. Wow, this is crazy, Hikaru. Now, if Wesley why, why, wins this why are you game, so sure that this is winning? I mean, there's bishop c8 coming. I, I'm just saying he's, he seems to be making very substantial progress in the position. Like, it seems like he's moving it all forward together. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I kind of agree with you, but I, I'm still not convinced that it's over. Like, bishop c8 here, a5, I guess. So, so bishop c8, a5, right? And yeah. Takes, take. And like if I go bishop b7, king d4, is this winning? Because bishop b2? But it but it doesn't feel like Mac. Like, Wes is going to go king d4, king d3. No? Like, king d4, bishop e6? I mean, I'm just saying you still have to be kind of careful. I guess king d3 is winning somehow. Yeah, it, it probably is winning, I, I guess. So king but d4, isn't... I think, here is the last critical move that he has to find. But, uh... Wesley's move seems so natural. Like, now that he found this idea, e5, e4, king e5, bring the king, it's like very... Seems yeah, just flowing. I, I mean, I kind of... Yeah, again, I, I think I think it's winning, but I think he'd be very careful still. I don't think it's trivial. Like, king d4, bishop c8, for example. Like, king d3, I think you have to play. You can't go a5, so after take takes bishop a6. Somehow the bishops cut all the diagonals for entry squares to the black king. Oh, so you're saying you can sack the a6 pawn as long as you get the king to d2? Right, I'm saying I think you have to sack the a6 pawn, actually. Wow. So wow. that's why that's I'm saying I'm, I, I don't think it's completely obvious. And also, after king d4, you have to worry about bishop e6 too and calculate 
Then after bishop d5, e3, king e1, knight d5, it's winning. Although actually I realized after king d4, bishop e6, king d3 takes, you can also go knight d1, which is which is very cool. Oh, oh, knight d1. Yeah, that, this is the key move. So bishop c8, king d3, and then I think it's over, basically. Right? So, I mean, bishop c8 is the only move here. Only move for... Uh, guys, okay, we can't go knight d1 now because we would hang our king, so that wouldn't right. work. Yeah, I mean, this is this is winning, for sure. I mean, this is 100% winning. I think now it's very easy. Just b5, knight b6, knight c4. Yeah, I mean, this is just very easy. Knight b6, knight c4. I mean, Magnus will try to do something, I guess, on the on the king side. Uh, but this this is definitely winning. Are you How surprised are you that this just happened? Um, I I am pretty surprised. But, I mean, like I said, Magnus, I feel like he's not... When... When he's gotten some of these positions, he's just he's found a way to drift throughout this event. So I'm not I'm not that shocked. Um, but it's kind of amazing how how much he drifted in this this middle game. Like I mean, it was bad after Bishop D6, but I was really shocked by his play that he that he tried to go for this two bishops versus two knights. Because I I thought strategically, to me it may I thought that getting a bishop and knight versus two bishops was realistically the most practical chance we would ever have of drawing the game. Um, whereas now, like, it's, I mean, everything wins. Knight e3, knight c4 wins, knight b6, knight c4 wins. Maybe not, knight b6, there's king c2 or something, but, um, but yeah, knight e3 should just be gg. Also, look at how passive the white bishops are. This bishop on, yeah. or not bishop, but the bishop on c1 is completely dead. This is, this is over. If, if Wesley plays knight e3, it's game over. 100% it's over. So, uh, interesting. Yesterday, they won four games with white. Today they're gonna win two games with black now. Mm -hmm. Total shift. Yeah, it's uh, pretty nuts. Pretty Total nuts. Shift. I mean, knight e3 wins. Uh, king e3 is a strange move, isn't it? Bishop h3 now. Wait, is there bishop h3? Wait, 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 wait what, what is king e3? Bishop h3 and bishop c8? I mean, it's still, wi whoa, 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 what's going on, Levy? Wait a second, bishop h3? Oh, wow. West, wow, Magnus doesn't even play it. He, he's got to go bishop h3. Right? But then king d3, bishop c8, king c2, and you just win, right? Or no, bishop f4? This must be winning. Um... Well, uh, he goes to d4, which is... Uh... Which is correct, isn't it? Or not? I, well, I, th I thought he was going to e3 to go to f3. That's what I thought, but... Aha, uh -huh. that was also but, possible, true. I just, I mean, I figured if you're going to move the king there, you might as well, because now, can't he just repeat? There should be two, like... Right, exactly, yeah, no, totally. Totally, yeah, just bishop b2, and, I mean, it's, uh... Yeah, and he has I, to find something new. Yeah, I, I mean, but the problem with bishop b2 is I think knight e3 is very obvious. So he does it, okay. Is Wesley doing the thing again? Like he did it uh, with no, you? No, but the, in like, this case, it's completely fine. It's completely fine to do this. I, I completely understand the reasoning. Now, now, yeah, now like knight e3 and um, and knight c4 or knight b6. I really do not like this move, by the way. I really do not like e3. Now bishop g2, and I guess king d3 is winning, but like with only a minute on your clock, like wow, Magnus just plays bishop a1. What? Just knight b6? Knight, uh, knight b6, knight, knight c4 five. looks like lights out. I mean, out. but, but yeah. any any order, any 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 maneuver to get the knight to e5 wins, doesn't it? Okay, g6. <laughs> they're yeah. they're really, uh, you know. Yeah, I don't understand what g6 is. I mean, I guess Wesley just figures he can play any move here, and he's, he's fine. Um, but, I, but now that's their bishop g2, knight b6 takes, and king e2. So just I, real quick. You can't go bishop eight. Okay, I was just about to ask you why you can't do this and go for the a6 pawn. Right, but now knight b6 cuts the square. That's why you had to go to g2. But I also oh, don't understand okay. why did Magnus put the bishop on a1 to begin with? Like, I don't understand this at all. Well, now Wesley's not even playing. Yeah. Is Wesley just missing knight b6, knight c4? Like maybe. Or... I mean, he's probably also very nervous. To be fair, knight b1 is a nice, nice, nice idea here. The knight a3, knight c2, and that's all she wrote. Bishop d2, knight, knight d2, and yeah, now Wesley will win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a nice move. <laughs> knight d1. The knight is the imposter. Lands on the home square of White's knight originally.
Yeah, this is just game over. Yeah, I mean, very strange. Very strange. I, I, I really don't. I mean, I'm not understanding what either of the players are doing, really, in this whole match. Very, very strange. And now and Bishop now G4. Have... I mean, oh, I guess Magnus that. still is Bishop G4. Like, this is still a move. I mean, let's let's see. I, I mean, there's nothing even really to, to commentate on at this point. Let's just see. So Bishop C4 played. Okay, so Knight C4 is game over, right? Knight C3. Now King E2. G4, Bishop C8. Now you have Knight C4. Yeah, but Bishop C8? I mean, how winning is this? How winning is this? Wait a second. Oh my gosh, computer says knight d6 and a bishop a6, king d4, and your bishop is boxed, and you just win the king and pawn endgame. There's no way Wesley will see it, but um, but that's a really nice touch. Or king d4, actually, yeah. Okay, it's so takes. King b4. King e3. I mean, this is still winning, but this is getting, I mean, this is getting very dicey now. Like, I mean, Wesley has to see king b4, king e3, king c3, takes knight b5, king e4, knight d4, king e5, g5 and g4 and you run the knight to h2 and win this one but i mean seeing this with only a minute on the clock like i don't know what to make of this this Honestly, is not well. this is not this is not trivial yeah it, it's winning i mean it's a technical win with king before c3 but it's not it's not trivial at all at all what would you play here? Would you take the pawn or play king d4? I feel like king d4 is much more... Yeah, yeah, king d4 is much more human, but the problem is now white can also just delay, right? White can just kind of wait behind the pawn. Or is this just winning two? No, maybe this is just cleanly winning two. Because you go knight b1 and knight c3 and the king gets boxed. No, I think this is actually pretty cleanly winning. I don't know why the computer doesn't say it. Is. I don't understand. This really is not just winning? Now it is. Apparently there was some weird bishop maneuver you could play that like cut the... Oh, you put your bishop on e6 and black can't easily walk over to the b4 pawn is what it wanted. Okay. Strange. But yeah, I mean, this, this of course, is just winning. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just a mess here, so... Um, yeah. yeah. Knight c3, e2, and Magnus resigns, right? Like, I don't... Well, no. King c2, e2, king d2. Still... But yeah, then I king c4, could... right? Yeah, then king c4, and you just hold up, hold off blue. Yeah. Two. Okay. okay. G5. Okay. Okay, he's making it interesting. Okay. It's still winning. Yeah. Yeah, because actually you can just go over to c4 at anyway. Like, yeah, what Wesley really? Uh, I mean, his technique was wasn't great, but position was too lost anyway. So yeah, it's, it's over. It's completely over here because you just go king c4, king b4, e2, and the king holds both pawns. And there's nothing white can do. He'll play like bishop c8, I guess, king b4, um, and then king d3, e2, king d2, and then you go for d4, b4, and yeah, Magnus yeah, very... will resign here with the next like five, five, five. That was very tense. It felt like. I mean, it looked. I mean, considering how winning it was for how long it was winning, his technique was not great, but um, but the position was so lost that it actually didn't matter. Yeah, you can just take the pawn of b4 or go e2. I mean, there, there's no way that Mac. There's no way that Mac can get lucky here, I don't think. Wesley would have to flag or something. But yeah, he just takes an e2. e2, king d2, king c4, d4, b4, run the king over. Easy b Yeah, I wonder what uh, Wesley looks like on camera. Well, he probably is doing his thing where he's just. Yeah. Oh, standard. King A3 is a nice move too, but King C4, D4 looks pretty clean. Everything is clean when winning here. King B3, King B2. Is... He does go King A3, the fancy yeah. move. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I'm amazed the way that Matt. That it's like Magnus mentally, after he blundered Bishop D6, he couldn't reset. He just could not reset his mind, and um, and just like just 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 stabilize. He, he kept trying, I guess, to keep chance alive or something instead of stabilizing, and. Um, and Wesley, even though his technique wasn't perfect at the end, the position was so winning that he didn't, and he didn't make any huge blunders that uh, that he won the game. So Magnus resigns, and it's one one. We have a match. Officially one one. Again. Same as same as yesterday, so it's perfect. I just keep updating for yesterday. Perfect. All right, so I guess let's take a break and come back in a few minutes. Yeah. Sounds good.
by all the size games so far. It's, pre it's pretty insane. It really is. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to make of this match. It's like somehow it feels like Magnus, whenever he's gotten the lead, he's like, he gets nervous or he's uncomfortable and just like a lot of little things are going wrong. And um, it's, it's just, it's surprising. It's very surprising because it, it, Magnus, normally when you think of, think of, um, uh, when you think of people like Magnus, he's generally very, um, he's, he's, he's got very good nerves and he's, he's just very solid. So it's, it's really weird to see. Has this ever happened in a match? Six decisive games in a row. Well, actually, that's a good question here, Carl. What's the last time Magnus had six decisive games in a row? Uh, what were <laughs> it was like, I mean, six in a row? I mean, probably it's been a while. Definitely it's been quite a while, yeah. When was the last time two Super GMs <laughs> had six decisive results in a row in a match? Um, yeah, I don't know. Chat, there you guys go. Oh, and we have over 50K combined, by the way. Um. Hikaru, one thing I was mentioning today when, yeah. you know, a few people were trying to, in, in chat, like, you know, uh, poke and prod, like, where you're watching, what channel, and, and, and all this mm -hmm. stuff, but isn't it just crazy? There's, like, 200,000 plus people all over the internet watching this event, if not more. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's, it's like I've said before, I do really feel like this format and having these online events with the top players in the world certainly approves the concept that chess can be an esport. Um, XQC is playing watch between games. Uh, well, well, I'm on with Levy right now. He can't do that. But is he really watch? Is he really playing chess? I assume you guys are trolling, but I'll, I'll check. I'll check anyway. I assume it's a debate, but I'll, I'll check. Yeah, it's a debate. Good, good one. Yeah, I had a feeling it was a debate, but check anyway. Um, all right. So, uh, <laughs> good one. Yeah. Um, oh, Hikaru, uh, some people are asking like, why did he resign? Did we just show like? Well, he resigned. Yeah, sure. He resigned because he can't take the knight because of the pawn on e will make the queen. He can't capture with the bishop. Then I trade the knight and then I make the queen this way. And if you just sort of sit, I push this pawn and I, I bring the king down. And you still can't take the queen. You can't take the queen. And then I'll make a queen and capture the king. And the knight is always holding both of the squares um, with the pawn on him. Um, oh, he's he's in live chess. Okay, let's see. Oh, he is playing. He is? Yeah, XQCOW1. I don't see him. Yeah. Yeah, just do just type forward slash XQCOW1. Okay. XQCOW1. Yeah, oh, he is playing. He is playing. Okay, so... He's got quite a position here, my man. <laughs> he has an extra rook on the board. He has queen, two bishops, and a rook. Uh, Scott beats Billy, has a queen, a knight, and a bishop. So he's actually up a rook. He's winning the game. He's dominating. It's almost checkmate. There's only one move, which is queen to d4 here. Now, will he see bishop to b4 winning on nah. the spot? No way, right? No, nah, it's beautiful. It's a very nice idea. Bishop b4 is a deflection tactic. King cannot guard the queen anymore. Oh! Oh, my God. What the... Oh! What a gangster! Oh my god! <laughs> what? <laughs> That's sick! What is this? <laughs> you go, why are we watching Magnus Wesley? This, this is right here. This is the Super GM. <laughs> <laughs> what has Bishop B4? I mean... <laughs> how does he see Bishop B4? Oh my god, that's amazing. Well, Higuru, it's a check. I mean, he's probably learned to solve puzzles. Checks, the captures, attacks. He probably yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is insane. This is crazy. Oh my God. That's amazing. All right, okay. chat, you know what to do. The Carlos chat, you, you still have clips enabled, right? I think so, probably, yeah. Okay, chat, you know where to go. You know what to do. Wow. Just that was beautiful. That was incredible. Oh my goodness, that was so nice. Well, let, let's see Let's see what he does here. I mean, he still, he still needs to uh, find, find some good moves. Don't take the bishop. Yeah, Don't I mean his opponent his, his opponent only has a, a knight and a bishop. It's a good move. It's a great move. Okay, let's it's see. Let's let let's see. Let's let's see. Um <laughs> let's see what happens. No stalemate. I mean he improved a lot, I felt like. At the end he really did improve. Um Well, one of my favorite videos on your YouTube channel is you watching him solve puzzles. He like solves like 80% of those puzzles. That's true, that's true, yeah. That no, video was point. amazing. Next is gonna go B4, probably. B4 or A5, yeah, one of those two moves. They're, they're both really, really good. Wow. Let's see. Okay, okay, that's good. Yeah, let, let, let's see. He, he'll, he'll lose on time. He's got 345, I don't think he will. 
Why isn't he streaming chess? I mean, because I assume he, he likes playing off stream. I, I think he does a lot worse on stream from what I've seen. So, so yeah, this is this is actually the true skilling open cut. Not a um, good move. Yeah, <laughs> why are we watching XQC? Because, of course, everybody would rather watch XQC. He's a far more important person than, than people like Wesley or Mac. Um, okay, so will he see it? There's a5 or queen a2. Queen a2 actually looks pretty pretty human here. Um, let, let, let's see what he's going to play. Let's see. Let's see. He's got three minutes. Yeah. Okay, he takes. That's good. 30k watching can't even play off stream. <laughs> Okay, let's see. So he takes. Okay, this is, he, is good. Is he not even streaming? No, he's not streaming. No, he's not Oh, streaming. he's just chilling. Oh my god, and he's he's already the celebrity. Amazing. Yeah, 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 I know. That's what I'm saying. It's hilarious that he's like, he's like, watch. He's like, not even streaming. And, and, and we're watching him. Okay, good. Will he see? I mean, he's trying to... The, you know, actually, what I like about this levy is that he keeps making chucks. He yep. keeps making chucks. Like, so he's not being the true stalemate Steve anymore. He understands he makes the chucks. Let's see, so rook d8 is a good move, maybe. Ow. Yeah, see, he didn't... See, I just said rook d8, there's a delay on the stream, so there's no way he's sniping. Because I did. I said rook d... I said rook d8 um, right as he was moving, and there's a five-second delay, so there's no way he's... He, there's no way that he's sniping. Let's see, will he see it? Okay, good move. Let's see, so king up six. Okay, let's see. Okay. Again, he has another nice... He has a couple of ways to make the chuck to me. I don't think he, he... There's no way that he knows that we're watching. There's, there's just no way. 2.30. He's got plenty of time. He just needs to, to relax. Let's see. He's got a mate. I tweeted out uh -huh. the moment where he played Bishop B4, and I was like, why are we watching Magnus Wesley? Let's just watch this man find uh, Bishop B4 all day. <laughs> Let's make uh, all the chess elitists small. Yeah. yeah um, like, why watch Magnus and Wesley? Hikar and I just tuned in to see true yeah. Super GM XUC play the beautiful Bishop B4 check. Right, right. Oh, his, off movie, his offline chat is people are like writing in his chat right now, apparently. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. What's he gonna do? Okay, he's got two minutes. Can he see a checkmate? I mean, there are a couple ways to mate. Like, I, I don't know, G5 works, E7 works, or G6 works. Or I shouldn't say. He still plays it though. Wow. Yeah. By the way, guys, uh, Magnus and Wesley are done. We are not yeah. truly mm -hmm. disrespecting them. They're on break. Um, right. But, Why are the standings only showing for Carlson versus so update the import standings? Right, right, exactly, yeah. Yeah, what's the head-to-head -head score between, um... Scott beats Scott Billy and XQC. Billy. Yeah. <laughs> Scott beats Billy is a name about, like, friends and not, like, a friend. Okay, checkmate it, too. Come on. You can do it. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Hey, Carl, there's no way he finds King E7, mate. Stop. Let's see it. Let's see it. <gasps> no way. Is he actually gonna find King up, mate? He might go king over also. Bo uh, both both moves make sense. Let's see. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> what a game. Okay. <laughs> what are we even watching? Yeah, wh why why are, why are we watching uh these these guys play? This is this is actual good chess. That was incredible. Wow, wow, that was that was amazing. Insane, insane. Oh, Gripix wrote something, get this guy in Pog Champs 3. How's it going, Gripix? Hope all is well. Um no, I don't think I don't think so, you guys. Uh because see King E7 and King F8 were I were moves. I thought G5 was actually a great move because it shows like trying to make a check. Um I mean he as far as let me just go through the game. I don't Oh, you guys, yeah, XQ, XQC was cheating, right? Because he blundered a rook on move three. <laughs> Levy, yeah. we missed the opening. We missed the opening. <laughs> How did he come back in this game? Oh, my gosh. Oh, he got knight c2. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I know. Come on, you guys. You think he, you think he's cheating? He blundered rookie one, winning the queen on e5? Come on, you guys. Seriously. Oh, he got cheese, man. Yeah. He got yeah, cheesed. Yeah. yeah, I mean, come on. Oh, oh, the guy played. Oh, the guy played rookie one, and then he blundered the rook on e one. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Oh man. Insane. 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 Completely insane. 
This Ooh. was such an insane game. <laughs> and then look at that tactic with Bishop D1, Levy. I know. Wow. Yeah, Bishop D1 was disgusting. That's insane. That's insane. He's very, he's very aggressive. He always looks for the aggressive moves first, which is mm -hmm. very smart. Yeah, that's true. Oh my God. XQC should co coach Magnus. Yeah, right. That's crazy. That bar, like. Wow, what a game! What a game! What a game by XQC. That was good stuff. All right, so that was our station break. So. Um, let's see. So what's the next one? Next one is between game through Wesley will have the white piece, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What can we expect? Another Caro? Yeah, I don't I think XUC stopped playing you guys. He probably saw that I was watching and he was getting nervous. I don't think he's playing. Um he just stopped after that game. That was a great win. Fantastic stuff. That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we Exquisite. should just follow XUC on the on, on like a yeah. small board. Yeah, he's not he's not playing right now. I'm following. So he's not playing. Well, after a game like that, you might as well just be done for the day. I mean, it doesn't That's get any true. better. That's true. Yeah, Bishop B4 was a beautiful, beautiful tactic. Wow. Yeah. All okay. right, so we should be starting pretty soon, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, this is going to be uh yeah, this is going to be exciting. I think I think really Magnus here he just needs to stabilize. Um He's, he's just been very... I mean, this whole match has felt very uncharacteristic for Magnus. So, um, I, I think he's, he's probably going to be solid this game. I expect him to be much more solid. So. Yeah, so what, what else is going on, Levy? Nothing. I'm still blown away by Bishop before in King E7. That was... Uh, yeah, that, that was an amazing tactic to spot. Really, really good stuff. Had XUC the call. I, I don't actually... Oh, oh, okay, we're off, we're off. E4, C6, okay, Ooh, more again. power cons. Okay. Again, very strange by Magnus choosing to play this again. I, I don't know if he has another idea or if he's just fed up and he just wants to play it. Oh, oh C5. C5. Wow. Now, this is very shaky, by the way. This is an extremely shaky setup. Um, because I'm wondering, C5, right? Yeah, I'm wondering how much Magnus has looked at this or if he's just sort of winging it at this point. Because this is a very dangerous line. I've actually played this quite a few times with Black. Um, I think with correct play, white should be better here. I mean, this, this is just very, very deep. A3, queen, g4 is not the main line, but it's it's a line. Yeah, I think a3, a3, queen, g4, bishop, b3, knight, f3. This is one of the reasons I don't like this line. Is because it's, it's it feels like a bad front in some way. Yeah, because you, you, you this forces black to play e6. Right, um, exactly. And so, like, I mean, black goes, like, queen, c7 and knight, c6 or knight, c7. White, I think, wants to go H4, H5 at some point and make, make it messy. So, um, yeah, th th this is a... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's a playable line, but it's very, very sharp. It's very, very shaky. Uh, as I said before, you guys, XUC is not playing. I'm following him on chess.com. So if a game starts, you'll see a game pop up. So he, he's, uh, he's not playing right now. Uh, refresh for timers? Okay, I'll do that. Okay. So it's 1-1 one, one right now. Let's see. Um, let, let's see. Yeah, A3 is by far the, the new... Yeah, see, Queen G4 is not a popular move order, but it scores mm -hmm. very well. Okay. Yeah, see, I mean, this is kind of the thing, though, is that this is also why you have to be careful. Like, people do walk into um, walk into preparation. So Magnus choosing to randomly play this maybe just doesn't think that Wesley's prepared. But I think it's... I mean, it's a very sharp opening. Very, very sharp. Hikaru. Mm-hmm. Do I on move this? seven, yeah. On move seven, the move that's been played the most is b4, followed by knight f3. The move bishop d3 has been played in seven games, and white wins 93% of the time in this move. Wow, really? Okay. So white has, oh, and now, well, now they're kind of drifting. Yeah, black has never won, according to my database. One draw, and white has won every game. Very strange, very strange. Okay, well, let's see what happens after Castle. I mean, so so Castle's blacks into Castle, right? And go F6, I assume? I would imagine, yeah. I don't, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, Wesley's moving fast, so this must be prep, right? Uh, Castle's is a novelty. Huh, okay. It's never been played, yeah. 
Right. So I, White, I, mm-hmm. White has won here. Like David Navarra beat a master level player. Arian Tari beat Jan, uh, uh, Jordan Van Forest. Okay. Okay. But no one has Castles. Castles is a brand new move. Hmm. Interesting. Like again, I mean, this this is a very very sharp sharp opening. I mean, Wesley seems well prepared for this, uh, which you would expect because every everyone like sort of has time to do preparation, so you would expect people to be to be looking at all sorts of different lines while they can. Man, you guys are very well prepared, huh? Yeah, I mean okay. this this is I mean very very sharp, very very uh very dangerous position for both sides. But I mean, I really like the way that Wesley's being aggressive here. Like is feels very much in the spirit of how you want to play the position so I'm, I'm very impressed by by what um by what by what wesley has done so far very impressed i'm seeing if this position has been like seen anywhere period um because <laughs> i think my, my database does also account for correspondence maybe this is a correspondence idea but Yeah, so I mean, I, I assume he's gonna. Um, I guess he's gonna castle, maybe play f5 at some point. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Wow. Okay, so guys, first of all, black cannot take on e5. Just take, take, and queen takes g7. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So knight e5, knight e5, queen g7. Exactly. So, um, yeah, like. What do you play here? Oh, is XQC live now? <laughs> XQC is live. <laughs> okay, that's really funny. Um, all right, sorry. <laughs> okay. He felt good. He was like, if I win this game, I'm gonna go live. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, totally. He's talking about it. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's pretty hilarious. Um, all right, so uh, I don't know what Magnus is gonna do here. This looks like a very bad position. Okay, wait, Hikaru, if this is, if this is how, wait, 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 wait hold on, hold on, serious, serious, mm -hmm. does this just refute this line? It could, I mean, I've always, actually, to me, the dangerous lines have always been things like with Queen G4, or even just like Knight F3 and Bishop E3, like, I've, I've for a long time now, I've felt that the C5 line with D takes C5 is very, very dangerous for Black, if not losing. Um, oh, XUC's watching the clip? Okay, that's pretty funny. Big shout out to XUC, of course, XUC L, um, I mean, he's done so much for chess. Okay, what is Magnus gonna play? Bishop d7 is a move, maybe f5 is a move, or maybe just castle into the threats, but castle looks very dangerous. Um, Queen c7 is possibly a move as well. Um, but yeah. This is actually crazy stuff. Queen g4, oh my gosh. Right, but the thing is, of course, your opponent should be prepared. Like, your opponent has to be prepared for, for something like this. Um, you, I don't think Magnus came... I mean, do you think Magnus, like, came fully prepared with... I mean, I think Magnus is just kind of winging it. He wanted to play a card con, but do something a little bit different. And um, and he castles. Okay, so he castles. Apparently, computer... Oh, is this all prep? Wesley is still moving instantly. Looks oh, like it. Oh, this looks like pure prep. The, uh, some... Knight g5? Four? Knight g5, h6 is winning for black or something? Wow, okay. I mean, this looks this looks so bad for black, but if black can get an f6 or f5, maybe black is okay here. Oh, Hikaru, black's not threatening to take on e5 at all because you right, have so he's g6. Right, so I assume the idea is to play f6 or f5. I don't know which one, but this looks so bad. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know why, but it, it looks terrible. D4. I don't like that at all. Oh, apparently Bishop D4 is very... Bishop D4 good for black there? Apparently that was the move, yeah. Wow. But, I mean, but wait, Igor, if Wesley played... Do you think Wesley's still in, in prep? Like... Yeah, very likely he is. Wow. So, this, uh... This could be a very bad experiment for Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, I, do, I don't like this at all in terms of what Magnus is doing. Now what? Rookie one, bishop b2, some move. 
Um, I think I think both moves are playable. I think rookie one makes 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 most sense here. Yeah, rookie one. Well, maybe B4 wasn't the most accurate, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know, but what was better instead of B4? Apparently Knight C3, just developing a knight. Hmm, okay. Computer says rookie one B5? In this position? Or no, rookie one... Ah, no, this is why B4 was so bad. B4 was so bad because the problem is now you open up the line for the bishop on F6. That's why B4 is a bad move. Like, it's a thematic move. But but the problem is that yeah after f5 bishop f6 it's very um yeah it's very tricky that's the reason because now you open you open up this diagonal which is not really great. Okay, here's a here's a five head question for you. But can't yeah. you play rook a2? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Levy. And then... Yeah, thank you, Levy. Thank you. Yeah, please. Rook a. Rook a2 and then c4 or c3 and rook e2. You you don't you don't you don't want to do that? It's like Tetris. I, I, you know? I, I mean it it just that's like. Okay, I mean, what am I supposed to say? That, that's computer. Computers are. You spend your whole life. You spend your whole life playing this game, and the computer says, "Oh yeah, play rook a two. Like, play rook a two. Don't don't follow the principles. Don't move the bishop. Get the rook to the center of the board. Just play rook a two. Like, knight c three now apparently is very strong to try to go knight b five. Yeah, I mean, Ooh. I. Gross. Okay, rookie one. Yeah, this still looks very pleasant, though. I mean, Black has to play f5 or f6, right? Or can he go bishop now, b8 at some point, maybe? Now it's the move you were talking about. Black has to go b5 here. Apparently to stop c4 or some sort of, like, knight to do c4. Ah, okay. Fair enough. Hmm. Yeah, this could get... Ugly. I mean, I would play bishop e8. Bishop e8 and f6 or f5. That to me seems the most human here. Mm. Oh, on the same wavelength. Look at that. Right yeah, on bishop e8 I expected, and now like f6 or f5 in the next two moves. Guys, there is no fork on f4, first of all, because the bishop is protected. But second of all, queen h7 would be checkmate. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You can't move yeah, the you, can't, you can't move the knight to the, the diagonal. Totally. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't like I don't like what Magnus has done, but Wesley has been a little bit imprecise here in terms of this opening. Hmm. Where, where would you put the b1 knight? D2 or c3? I think, I mean, I would like it on C3 ideally, but D2 feels very human, very natural, especially with A A3, B4 being played, because then you can route the knight to D4. Mm, that looks annoying. Can you go knight D2, knight B3, knight D4? Can, can go where? Knight, like knight D2, knight B3, knight D4. Same mm -hmm. thing, but... Yeah, that, that actually, that, that makes... Yeah, that, that's what I was saying. Um, but yeah, to go to the D4 so, Can Wesley um, play Queen H3 here? To stop the F-pawn from moving? I, again, I, I mean, once, the, once you see the computer say it, it looks very natural, but I don't know. Somehow to me, it doesn't feel... It doesn't feel intuitive, because it, like it feels like you're better, and you need, to, you need to play, like, logical forward moves instead of something like Queen H3. Just because you feel... Like, Wesley must know that he's better, because... He cl this clearly was prepped, so he knows it's a good line. Um, so, Queen G4 actually feels... Actually, Queen G4, to me, seems much more logical. Like, Queen G4 and H4, H5 actually seems very realistic. Oh, I was saying Queen H3 because the knight can't move. My, my my engine is saying Knight D2 and H3. It wants to play H3. Mm, again, so not... Three. Yeah, not, not very... So it's on a depth 30, and it wants H3. Yeah, I mean, Queen G4 and E H4 feels like the thematic way to attack. Okay, he goes Knight C3, completely reasonable. Mm -hmm. Would you ever play H6 here with Black? Um, I mean, probably not, but knowing that it's Magnus, maybe he sees some idea with H6 and Knight H8 and F5 or F6. <laughs> Oh no, oh. actually no, no, h6 makes sense to go knight f4. That's why h6 makes sense. It's just you want to go knight f4, and there's no checkmate anymore. So h6 does make make quite a bit of sense here. Uh -huh. okay. 
But I mean, yeah, knight c3 seems completely fine. But actually, what's your move after h6, by the way? Because now you can't go queen g4, right? Because I just take? Or is there some fossil in here? No, it, there's no fossil, so... Yeah, h6 actually makes some sense here. I wouldn't be shocked if Magnus plays it. Yes, it's not It's not an, even a mm. weird move, per se. Because like you said, you want to move the knight. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, I, I don't like the position, though. I mean, it's, I think it's very hard to play with white with all this aggressive play on the king side. Knight e2 to prevent knight f4? Yeah, I mean, knight e2 is definitely a move. Uh, but then I think black can play f5 and just try to open it up with the queen on h5. I don't know. I don't know. Would yeah, you enjoy strange. playing chess on your birthday? Would you have to celebrate after or before? Um, so I've actually, I, I think I've said this before, uh, mm -hmm. but I, I celebrated nine birthdays in a row in London uh, because I played this tournament called the London Chess Classic from 2009 through 2019. Um, I think it was, uh, so no, it was actually 10 birthdays, sorry. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was 10 birthdays, I believe. Um, and, uh, I, I had to play on most of my birthdays, so I did really well. I had a, two, two of my favorite wins actually were on my birthday. I won a game with Black against Vladimir Kramnik and also a game with Black against, uh, Vishyanon and the Kings Indians. So I, I had some great results, but I actually, the last time I played on my birthday, I had this terrible loss to Wesley, oddly enough, um, where I, I lost this very bad game with White and Grunfeld. So my last experience wasn't great, but generally I would say that my celebration was I would wait till the rest day, or if the rest day was the day after, I would celebrate that evening. But generally there was very little celebrating before. That's What's your drink of choice on your birthday? Um, I never really had a drink, maybe like just a little champagne or something, but I, I never really, I mean, especially because it was during tournaments and competitions, I, I never really yeah. had a lot of, okay. lot of drinks, yeah. Fair. Oh, by the way, chat, uh, our birthdays are four days apart, so it's going to be a good week. <laughs> we'll celebrate, uh, we'll, you know, celebrate bigly. What a, what a game. What a game. This is, this is about to get wild in a few moves. Depending on what, what happens here. Will Magnus go for h6? Will he move his f1? Yeah, I don't know. Magnus is a long time. I think h6 is a logical move here. Um, I don't know what else you can do, though, because if you can't play f6 or f5, then h6 seems to be a very logical move. Well, seven minutes. I mean, he doesn't have a tremendous amount of time. At least, see, Hikaru, this is the difference. If this was classical chess, mm -hmm. we'd be bored to death. But he has seven right. minutes where he right. loses some time. Right. No, this is this is very true. Yeah. I mean, I think this is. Um, yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, tough position to play, and that, that's also why in rapid chess, it's very easy when you get these free flowing positions where you try to attack, you have straightforward ideas. Like for white, it's easy to play. Whereas for black, black is defending. It's very hard to find solid ideas here. You're one. You're Queen right. d7. Very strange move. I, no, he wants to go f6. This is the concept. He wants to go f6, and the queen supports the pawn on e6. That's the only reason he plays queen d7. Yeah, I mean, God, but Hikaru, that is such a... That, like, that's a move that like just doesn't look fully correct. No, I mean, it definitely doesn't look correct, but I, I understand it. I want to see what Wesley does here, though, because Rook D1 doesn't... I mean, you have to be concerned with these F5, F6 moves, so Wesley does have to use a little bit of time here, especially with the Queen being on H5 and under attack from the Bishop on E8. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go look at what our favorite super... Com uh, not super computer, <laughs> Super but... computer, yeah. <laughs> right. Rook, Rook D1, Queen H3, and, uh, the, the best move? Oh, it wants to play Knight E2. Right, knight 92 f and then what, f6 and then what, knight f4 or something? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I still think it's it's very complex and we're going to have a very messy position here. Um... 
Night yeah, I don't know. I don't know. 92 knight f4 is disgusting because then if black plays f6, the knight on uh, g6 is paralyzed. Like it has to go to h8. Only move. Okay, so he plays queen h3. Okay. I mean, can black go f5 or f6 here? Like f6 takes bishop f6, queen e6 takes rook e6, knight f4, and black's okay, right? I, I mean, uh, I think Magnus just has to play f6 here. I think he just has to play f6 and hope that it works out. F6. Uh. So what if I don't take? What if I just play, like, rook ad1 on f6? Um. Mm, true. That's actually a good move. Yeah, good point. Yeah. I don't know, there's probably something, but... Then can, wait, then can Magnus play f5? Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, if black goes f5, I thought knight e2 is always very pleasant, because you get the grip on d4. Yeah, but, oh, and then, well, once you can also play c4, aren't you just, like, crushing c4, knight d4? And you right, just... exactly, so that's why, yeah, the structure with f5, knight e2, I mean, that's why if I'm Magnus, I just play f6 here and hope it works out. I don't really think you have, um, you have a choice. You just have to go for it and hope that it works. Hey, Hikaru, how about... If, if, uh, if we had some moves, knight e2, knight f4, knight h5, knight f6, check. Right, and then a lobster pincer with queen h6 and check. Yeah, very nice idea. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't get six moves. Mm -hmm. I think, oh, I mean, oh. f6, he's got to go f6, so it's the only move here. I, I'm amazed that he's still thinking. Like, nothing else, I mean, there's nothing else that really can possibly work. Are there any, uh, you know, I'm surprised. I mean, may maybe you've had a few clips dropped in your chat. I haven't seen a single clip. What was, has, how, has Magnus reacted at all after the last game? What, we know we're all here for the desk slams and, um, and the emotions. So, what are we, was there anything? Yeah, somebody's sharing an XQC clip, but that's, oh, Magnus is calm today. He must have meditated. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Magnus is playing very, very weird here. Um, F6 is the move. Okay. Yeah, guys, um, those of you talking about, obviously, the viewers combined, uh, this is the crazy thing is, this is just the first tournament. I did not expect this, honestly. Like, I thought it would have to be a slow process. But just think about it, the next tournament Hikaru's playing in, the prize fund is doubled. All more important because the qualification for the final, so... <laughs> um, have you decided the plan of uh, playing in the whole tour versus not, or just looking at how Um, it's... I haven't really decided yet. I haven't, I, I haven't decided, but probably I will, because it seems like the fans really enjoy this, so, so, so maybe, I, maybe, maybe I will. The fans have enjoyed this, man. Your channel had like, uh, I mean, we've averaged 30,000 like viewers like on some of these broadcasts which is which is an astounding number i just hit my all-time peak a minute at 15k i've never had that many people watching ever so nice very very nice lovey fantastic how about anna anna's channel is like <laughs> is blowing up so it's really cool to see no i think in, in general okay plays f5 takes bishop f6 played instantly by by wesley i'm kind of surprised he plays instantly um like I don't know. Anyway, though, back to Anna. Yeah, it's great to see chess, chess, um, chess, chess, chess. Um, the way that the way that it's, that it's uh, that it's just popping off. It's fantastic to see. It's really cool, Hikaru, to see like in the middle of like not even a like you know you don't even necessarily need like a U and 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 Magnus final that will attract obviously even more. But like even some of these prelim rounds, like the first three days of the of the round robin, mm -hmm. you know, we were getting up to like 35, 40k. It was crazy i mean people exactly just yeah excited. okay now what's going on after knight d4 here by the way rook f6 oh then queen h3 what's going on in this position knight this D1? looks really good for um this looks really good for uh for wesley but not 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 easy to play Knight d4 is a mean move. Is what, what? Magnus has three minutes, man. Like something feels off. Yeah, I feel like Magnus just throughout. He's just been very shaky. I know this is very strange. 
Yeah, like the, the whole time usage here is insane. I don't know what's going on. He seemed pretty chilled out versus Nepo. So I don't know. Wesley's bringing out some something in him. I don't know. I guess it's just the losing the games or something. Like, just blundering. Yeah, I, it's just, yeah, something's just off. I, I don't know what's off exactly, but yeah, something is just He just, just blundered. Off. Like, apparently it's just a losing mistake. Oh my god, Knight C7's apparently like, like a... Why? Was 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 totally not what was supposed to happen. No, no, but I mean, the computer's giving an insane line levy. This this rookie 1, Bishop F7 is saying you go rook F6, queen ah. H3, rook G6, and apparently you're winning, <laughs> oh. but this, I mean, this is absurd. Oh my god, wait, actually, rookie one, bishop f7, and you sack the queen? Yeah, you just sack the queen and take on g6, and I think you've like you've got like knight d5, you have bishop, you've got like threats on g7, the knight on e7 is hanging, everything is hanging. I mean, this is not, this is not realistic, but, I mean, it's not gonna happen, for example. Wait, that's the most insane thing I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Well, Look you know what's six. weird, you know what's weird, Levy, is it's saying that, it's saying that, um, Rook takes f6 is the next best move. Like, rook f6, rook f6, and just queen g3 and white is better. But if you don't go rook e1, at least the engine on chess.com is not saying that it's, uh, is not saying that it's winning. Oh my god, rook, rook e1, bishop f7, rook f6, queen h3, rook g6. So if you take the rook, you're just down, you're just gonna be down material. Like, with something like this. This is something. Oh my god. And if you try to save your queen, you get hit with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rookie one is a human move. The problem is after rookie one, bishop f7, like, if you don't see this rook g6 move, then it doesn't make any sense at all. Okay, so Wesley here is going to use a lot of time, I think. I think Wesley might even play, like, bishop b5, there's knight f4. Let's see what happens. This is a very tricky move by Magnus, by the way. Because, I mean, the computer gives this crazy line with rookie one. Rook f6 takes, rook g6 is winning. But, I mean, I don't know. Like, for a human to see this, like, I think it's extremely hard. Extremely hard to see. That is literally... So, Sessi is giving... It's 0, 0, 0. Mm -hmm. That line is plus 4. Rook f6, rook g6. Right, right. But, but nothing else works, right? Nothing else. Everything else yeah. is equal. You think you can... You, would you guys find this in classical? Probably, right? Um, think? yeah, I think if you had 10 minutes, a good, like, 10 to 15 minutes to think, like, or 20 minutes even, I think, I think, yeah, I think we would actually find this work F6, work G6. But I don't think you would find this. It, I mean, if, if Wesley finds this, he deserves to win the match. That's all I'm going to say. 100% if he finds it. But I don't, I mean, it's really, really hard to see. Because the problem is after rookie one, bishop F7, which is very logical, well, you see, rookie seven doesn't work, so I just take the queen and I take your rook. So if that doesn't work, then, and you move the rook back, then there's, like, going to always be some, some, uh, queen h3, d4 with a fork. So it's actually... And he played bishop b5. Yeah, I, and now knight f4, and black's back in the game. Knight f4. I told you guys, Magnus is insane. How is it that he plays a terrible game? Like, a terrible game, but it's like, the, it's, there's this one complication, and he's back in the game. Unbelievable. Yeah, I told you. I, I mean, if you don't if you don't see that idea, Levy, you're probably going to play bishop b5 because you're just like, okay, well, after rookie one, bishop f7, I can't move the rook back, and otherwise I just lose the rook. So what do I do? And you were like, okay, I play bishop b5 and trade, but now there's knight f4 in between her. Magnus will... There's almost no way Magnus doesn't see knight f4 here. He's got to see it. But he's still... Knight f oh, oh! Wow. Knight f4 was winning on this... Was winning. Just literally winning. In one move. Very strange. But I mean, oh my the, God, but, okay, but, but Levy, the problem is Wesley has to play rook f6 here. Everything else is still losing. Well, bishop e8, knight f4 is the reason why it's losing, right? Because you would just play knight f4. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, rook f6, can Wesley really play it? Because, I, I mean, but everything is under attack, to be fair. So, like, you kind of have to, in a way, see it. Oh man, Hikaru, that bishop on b2 will be so good after rook f6. Uh, knight f4 was really strong, guys, because if you take the queen, check, you take, and take, and the problem is that, um, too, too much stuff is weak here. This, mm -hmm. this, this. Play rook e3 to guard, 
D4 is a fork. Black white would have to sacrifice the exchange. Yeah. I think I think Wesley will see Rook F6 maybe, but whew. Rook F6, Rook G6 yeah. was. I, I don't even know. Insane. I don't even know what to make of this game. This is so strange. This is just so bizarre. You know, I was thinking of naming uh, a recap video of this of these games "Happy Birthday, Magnus," but mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not so sure I can call it that anymore. Th this is this is actually <laughs> like this is crazy stuff. This is I've never seen anything like this. Um, it. It doesn't feel like Magnus Carlsen and Wesley So are playing a match. I'll tell you that. Like, mm -hmm. remove the names. <laughs> I'm not saying the level of play is bad. No, no, it's just crazy. Like, we don't, you're not used to seeing. Oh, man. This is a uh, completely, completely insane. Rook F6 is good because everything else is losing, guys. That's the thing. Like, it's by virtue of, of elimination. Because Knight F4, Bishop B5 is. He played rook f6. Okay, he did. Okay, good. So if rook c8, bishop... Okay, you go... Uh, but now knight f4? Oh, he traded the queens. He traded the queens. Okay. So he has dark squared bishop and one pawn for Magnus's rook. Oh, knight is ninety two something or is that so ninety two? Just... Bishop e two and then what? Rook c six, bishop d three, bishop g six. Maybe is this the idea? But then knight d four. It's still complicated. Why, guys? Well, Wesley um, didn't find the only winning idea that he had, which was this rook takes f six. I mean, it, it... not much else you can say. Um... Faro is very ferociously hmm. typing away. Is, is everything all right? You you seem intense. No, no, things aren't fine. But anyway, let's uh, let's let's get let's focus on the chat. Um, okay. so if Bishop D three here, probably just Bishop G six, I assume. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't like this position for um for Wesley. I think it's going to be hard to play, even though he's four minutes more on the clock. Hmm. What 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 is there to think about? Is yeah, bishop d3. Okay. So bishop g6, of course, knight d4, and I guess rook f6 is the idea, probably. Um, or rook d6, maybe. Knight d4 looks really nice. Yeah, but I mean, still, like, it's still. Apparently, rook b6 is bad because of bishop e2 or something. <laughs> Rookie one is a very natural move, right? Right, so. agree. So bishop d3, rookie seven. Ah, that actually looks problematic, no, for black? A little bit, yeah, it's tricky, yeah. That really doesn't look... That does not look great. Then you can play f4, g4, f5. I mean, you can just go crazy with the pawns here. Yeah, Matt, uh, Hikaru, Magnus with 90 seconds. He is... He is very, very low on time. Very long time here. Oh my gosh, he's going down to one minute. Anish said uh, he he had mm -hmm. joined the um, the broadcast yesterday. He mentioned that like Magnus, Hikaru, even Wesley are players that under time trouble, you guys keep your nerves very well. Generally, yeah. That generally, sometimes? that's true. Yeah. Okay, so Magnus will find the um. Yeah. Um, okay, so rook c4, bishop e2 is apparently a draw, right? Oh. Because if you go rook c7, there's rook c1. And so rook c8, bishop g4, and I guess it's a draw. <laughs> this is going to be a draw. Crazy. Oh, man. So who's happier here? Let me ask you, who's happier? I think I think Magnus is happier here, for sure. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I, th I think I think I think Magnus Tapir because he was in big trouble in this game. Wow, guys, it's gonna come down to this final game. I don't, I, I don't think it's gonna go to Armageddon. This is their first draw. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, if Magnus is really, if Magnus is really uh, feeling tilty, then he's gonna play like a Berlin and just make a draw and go into Blit. So it's, I think it's hard to tell. Magnus is, of course, the favorite in Blitz, but is it close? I think it's very close. Yeah, I mean, I think anything can happen in Blitz. Um, so I, I don't think there's any guarantee, but I think I think Magnus might just be, um, he might just be really, he might be really tilty and just, just wanting to make a draw here. Yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break. Sorry, right, love you. Okay. I need to get some air. I'll be right back. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, last time I was uh, last time I I muted just to talk in my chat. Yo, Hikaru's chat. I'll uh, I will entertain y'all as well. Don't know. Don't know, Joe. Um, but. Hoping for, uh, hoping for the best. Um, do I have any, no, no chat, no. Plus if I did, that's not something that you talk about on stream. Just be supportive and we'll hope for the best. No idea what's going on. Um, why doesn't the tournament have exclusive rights to broadcast these matches? Actually, it's a serious question. Chess moves are not copyrighted. In fact, there was a lawsuit. Somebody sued somebody. You cannot uh, trademark or patent or anything, that kind of stuff. Player cameras, you can. Um, so, you know, there is a... There is like a sort of like permission, like I would love it if we got a, you know, Hikaru cam. Last time, the way that works is that they have a feed, so we can't contact him. It's just the feed of a camera. It's live. And we put it in uh, VLC style into our broadcast. Um, but uh, no, yeah, some people try to uh, copyright chess moves. So only they could broadcast it. So that's a nice message. Hardest working man in chess stream. I don't know about that. I mean, Hikaru's stream is more hours than me. Um, I think overall. But yeah, listen. I think it's. Uh, I think. What is the saying? Luck is when hard work meets opportunity, or something like that. Nobody could have expected that Chess would be would be doing this well, but I think you just have to go uh, go hard and work as hard as you can. Take breaks later. Um, Hikaru cannot have a separate camera just for us when we do the show uh, because there is a concern that we would be able to communicate with him. They're not suggesting that that would happen. It's just protocol, you know what I mean? Um, that theoretically is a possibility, and they want to make sure they have control over everything. That's just how that works. Um, yeah. yeah, these games have been amazing. These games have been amazing. Um, I mean, how about that Rook F6, Rook G6? I, that was surreal. Well, it was the most insane engine line I think I've ever seen. So... Uh, this last round, man. No clue what to expect. No clue what to expect. Can we get a can camera on him through the window? Guys, why don't we do this? Why don't we just get Myth? Some of the other, uh, you know, some of the other uh, big TSM guys. To just stand, take shifts, our shifts, holding a camcorder on Hikaru from outside the room. That's just what we do. Myth will sit on a chair, you know, on his phone, hold the camera. Or we, we don't have to get any of them. I mean, we can just, you know, they don't have to do anything. We'll just get a, a little chair and then we'll put a little, little uh, camcorder on the chair and just stream it. I mean, first of all, I don't understand why they would have any problem with that. It's just another camera. I mean, just on a chair. We're not going to give. Um, would I feel, oh, that's a good question. Would I feel naked commentating these games without stock? Uh, no. In many ways, not having an eval bar actually is better. I'll tell you guys why. Because when we suggest moves that look humanly okay, and we play them and the bar just tanks, 
it's funny and you know most most folks understand it doesn't kill our credibility it's just funny reacting to the engine but it's not so fun you know hypothetically that's why i've resorted actually to um like drawing arrows more than anything else uh because even like you'll notice when the engine first reacts to a move it goes and then it has to think and even you know myself and a hikaru we suggest moves it starts going like this so it's it's a little bit yeah i mean with no bar it would it would honestly be probably a little bit more fun one of the things that i love the most about the queen's gamut on netflix it was amazing watching people analyze chess with no conclusive entity to tell you whether or a move was right or wrong right think about that now anybody you know you end the game in a tournament you turn your phone back on because your phone has to be off you just bup, 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 bup. oh wow i could have done that back in the day you just sit down at a table you start talking chess it's like a beautiful thing but we were worse players all right what's up love you back yeah 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 I all was, right let's um... keep going okay so game four is coming up right yeah okay uh we were talking about the role of engines and commentary like uh is it fun to do it with with or without an eval bar i mean you have an advantage of being you know one of the best chess players in the world but i'm talking like from an im perspective i mean so. i think i think it's it's somewhere in between like on the one hand it's uh it's good because we see like what the best moves are what the fascinating solutions to the issues in, in whatever whatever uh position there is but um, at the same time, it also kind of, it, it makes you like not appreciate how hard the games are and how, how hard the players are working. So it's, it's kind of in between. But I mean, this Rook F6, Rook G6 move was insane. I mean, completely insane. You know, what's funny though. I bet in a Blitz game, Dan, Daniel might've found it. Like Daniel Naroditsky, if he was playing me, I think he probably would find something like that. Cause it's just, it's so special and it's like so fantastical. Um, but in, in like a game where everything is on the line and you're trying to be precise, not make just crazy blunders, it's much harder to spot those things. You're saying uh, Daniel's a creative genius, but maybe inconsistent? Well, in, in a sense, yes, but I mean, it's just like you go for the spectacular sacrifice in a blitz game. In a game where it matters, like it's mm -hmm. very hard to do that. Very hard with everything on the line. Because if it's wrong, it's just like, eh, I mean, you know, what Fair. do you do? Yes. But, uh, are we not using the same we might not be using the same standing spreadsheet because i i updated it but maybe you okay oh, oh can you send it to me i was i was just using an image back. Oh, oh okay yeah here just okay i guess i'll um yeah just you can just uh right click copy link open it in a different window and then just yeah, yeah i'm coming I mean, <laughs> yeah not not leak it right totally no, well, spreadsheet, it's n nothing, nothing to leak, but... Yeah. Okay, one second. Let me, let me switch my... Yes, computer showed the line, and then it said, you gotta play like Dania to, um, to get this. Yeah, one second. Uh, you can still hear, everybody can still hear me, though, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I just, I changed the scene. Give me one sec. D. Uh... Geary tweet. Okay, sure. Geary said, what the fork? Okay, that's, that's funny. Uh-huh. Okay. Was there anything else or uh no, I think that's wait, you have two and a no, half. No, I'm talking about Anisha's Twitter. Wait, um, but you have the scores two and a half, look. No, I don't. Right side. All the way bottom right on the, the standings oh, page. Oh, 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 there we go. Oh yeah. there oh sorry, there we go. Yeah, we just Okay, yeah. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it'd be, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens with uh, with with Mr. Beast in chess. I would imagine he's very busy making, um, a, you know, those epic videos. It, chess is a weird thing to get good at. You really need a lot of time. A lot of time. You have to put a lot aside to get good at it. Like the PodChamps people, right? I mean... Like Hafu? Yeah, I mean, she, she, put in a, she put in more work than I think anyone else. So, I mean, it kind of, kind of makes sense that, um, yeah. that, that she won. Well, for example, like, um, you know, people have been telling me, like, for example, a few, a few, uh, cre like, a few creators, gamers are currently playing chess, like, Bodhi is an example, um, Northern Lion, those mm -hmm. guys are playing chess every day, you know, like, chess is no joke, you don't just get good playing a few games. Right, like, no, that, that, that's very, very true, exactly, no, I to totally agree, yeah. You have very to go true. for hours and not everybody can, uh, can do it. Mm -hmm. 
Oh man, predictions? What will Ma Magnus play? Um, I think he's gonna. I think he's. I think for for the memes and for the hype, he's gonna play e4 and make a draw on the Berlin. Ah, uh, for Blitz? Yeah, I think I think he's gonna make a draw for for the memes. I think the we're gonna. The longer we, they I think go on Blitz. Norwegian broadcast, do they make more ad revenue? What's that? The longer they go on the Norwegian televised broadcast, don't they make more ad revenue? Probably. No, I'm just saying. I'm you know. Hey, Magnus, well, he also technically me? owns owns Chess 24, so um, the longer they go, more people maybe you know. I'm just saying. Oh wow, I did not think about that. Um, yeah, actually, that's true. No, I don't mean you guys. I'm not talking about Norwegian TV. Oh, oh, maybe they don't make money because it's state owned. But like, I know Chess 24. They actually probably make more money. Why no response, to Mr. Beast? Those of you who are in here, I played with Mr. Beast last night. I actually. I DM'd and I, I was talk, I was on Discord call with him for like an hour playing chess and talking about YouTube. So I have had interactions with Mr. Uh, with Mr. Beast. Yes, yeah, just because things don't happen on stream doesn't mean they don't happen off stream. Always <laughs> remember. Always remember. Yeah, good point. Yeah, it's, totally. Chat, if you didn't totally. see it, it's you know. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Man, we just wait a few more minutes and this is it. This could be the final game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's gonna be a draw. I think, I think, I think Magnus is gonna play a Berlin or something, make a draw, and just go to Blitz. But maybe not. We'll see. Uh, someone asked me about Leffens or or Leffen, Sorry, uh, I had a conversation with him. I think he's very new to chess, so maybe maybe down the road we'll do something. I would love to do something with, of course, with with Myth as well. Um, uh, as well, he he expressed an interest in chess too. What um, we were wondering. Uh, what would it take? Mm -hmm. Like, why can't we set up a camcorder sitting on a chair recording you from the side when you play these things so mm -hmm. we and we can see you with Anna? And you, just get, you mean like, when I'm playing up. in the actual event? Yeah, like when you play like the skilling open. Thing. Well, because they have the rights, like, that's why. Oh, they just don't want us to see you? I mean, or... I would assume so because they also want the views. <laughs> but I'm saying they see you and we see you, just different sides of you. Or so only they like they want they want to be the only people that get the camera feed. Right, okay. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I okay, think so, well, yeah. There you go, chat. I tried. I tried. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I don't know. I mean I'm not I'm not saying that it that they can't do it, because theoretically also that would be better, because that means like that's even that's even more anti cheat detection in a way, but um but yeah. We tried. But, yeah. I don't I don't know, but I, I assume that's the case. I, I have no idea. So yeah. Anyway, um game should be starting very soon, right? I think so. Thank you once again to everybody for all the primes. I'm just gonna take my primes if you don't mind. Love you just for a second. Thank sure. you to Thanos who real guy with the prime, JW Horizon with the prime, repose with the prime, Carson Long with the prime, the string with the prime, Pepper Dew with the prime, white patch with the prime, Coast Zero with the prime, Mr. Rain with the prime, Kill Cards with the prime, Ambuka with the prime. Vladmar with the Prime, Zulurf with the Prime, Kaiju TV with the Prime, Take a Big uh, Brimfish with the Prime, Take a New Face Tier 1, Shinny Boy Tier 1, Flipsy Tier 1, Rocky with the Tier 1, Thank you so much, Thank you to um, Curry HD with the Prime, Thank you Douglas and Cheese with the Tier 1, known for the, for the, um, to get the sub, Thank you so much, appreciate it. Thank you to Fighter with the Prime, Wayne Firestar with the Prime, Johansson with the Prime, Yip Koye with the Prime, Yipi Kaye Kaye, Thank you to Ghost Interview with the Prime, and Mr. Section, or Miss Erection, Prime, Thank you so much, appreciate it. Um, Theta Gomer with Prime and Penmaster with Prime as well. Thank you so much. Um, all right. So, yeah. Let's Rap let's, God. Thank you, Clown Soul with the Prime. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> thank you, Crazy oh, Person like, with the uh... Prime. David out with the Prime. Crazy Person with the Prime. Thank you so much. Yeah, you guys, uh, you guys summon with the Primes are, uh, <laughs> What's up with their Prime? <laughs> thank you, Tatum with the Prime. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Jeez. <laughs> wow. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah. On my channel too, guys. Thank you. Um, we gotta get we gotta get these in here. Some some uh, hype trains going on and um. Wow. Thank you to Colin though with the prime, Habitus with the prime, annoying anyone with the prime, and, and Rico with the prime, and Norman John with the prime. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay. So Levy, um, what do you? I think Magnus is gonna play the Berlin. Do you think he's gonna do the same thing or not? Well, I can't, you know, I can't just be in agreement. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna say, no. I think Magnus will play the Italian, and they will play a game. 
Oh, really? Okay, interesting. Wesley plays Berlin? Like yeah, yeah. Play oh, Berlin? I mean, in this game, 100% he'll play the oh. Berlin. Oh, we're about to find out. I, I, I think we're going to get a Berlin, and we're going to get a quick draw and go into Blitz. That's that's my guess. Okay. Farming farming t uh, air time. Let me, let me reload it so that the clock is correct. Yeah. Oh, Wesley has lost the game on time. Okay, Pog. Good stuff, Wesley. Yep. <laughs> okay. Is Wesley not at his seat? I don't. Oh, maybe he's not at his chair. That's true. Yeah. He maybe he's just getting to the seat now. Who knows? Actually, crazy. People in my chat are saying. Uh, I saw a message. My heart is pounding as if I'm playing myself. I mean, yeah. It's mm -hmm. this isn't. Oh, moment of truth. Yep. Yep. Let's see. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, Ikaru might. Oh, oh, oh! You were right, man. You were right. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Okay, so Magnus is gonna play one of the draw lines, but he's gonna play one where it's not a forced draw. Okay. Okay. <sighs> it's a, is this super GM code for hey man, let's play some blitz games? Uh pretty much, yeah. Okay, he goes C3 too, and this I think for sure now. Queen E8. After or Knight E8 7? or Queen E8 is I, I think yeah, this this is okay, this is just gonna be a draw, yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be a quick draw. What do you think we're gonna get in the blitz? That's, uh, is it 10 minutes now again, or five? Um, I think it's it's five minutes. It's five plus uh, five plus three. Yeah, two games of five plus three, and then Armageddon. No, no, I meant uh, the break between the last rapid and the first blitz It's game. five it's minutes, five minute break, five yeah. Yeah, five minute break. I told, I mean, I had a feeling this was gonna happen, because Magnus is, I think he's feeling like he's not playing good chess right now. So why, why not just make a draw? Although, actually, now that I look at the position, is this really that easy to draw? This looks like a game that Danny and I would play. Well, they are playing extremely fast, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is going to be a draw. I think. Wait, is there is a rookie 8? Rookie 8. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, like... Yeah, they're just going to... I mean, they're just making the quick draw. Okay, well, since they're farming, um, you know, uh, potential premium signups and uh, ad money... Mm -hmm. uh, remember, guys, <laughs> you link your uh, Amazon Prime to your Twitch account, you get Prime Gaming. You click subscribe, it says subscribe for free. Wait, 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 really wait a second. How did they make a draw? You're not allowed to make a draw before move 40. Even in at the head match? No, I mean, you're, you're not allowed to make a draw before move 40 unless it's, unless it's, um, in, in, unless it's the, uh, unless it's tiebreaker or blitz. That was in the regulations, I'm pretty sure. Maybe I'm insane, but I'm almost certain that I read that in the regulations. You're not allowed to make a draw. You can repeat, but they didn't repeat. So are they both forfeited and nobody wins the skilling over? I mean, they both should be forfeited and the winner should be Jan and myself. They broke the rules. Forfeit them. Kick them out. Okay. Fair, fair, fair. Um, well, I'm not, I'm not, you know, your legal counsel, but, uh, you know, I'll say that we'll investigate our options. No, but I'm, I'm pretty sure on that. that you're, you're not, you're not allowed to do that. I mean, that, those were the rules. I mean, okay, obviously they could repeat and make the draw, but I, I, I I'm almost certain that I saw that in the reg that you're not allowed to make a draw before move forward. That's why Levon and I had a game in the final round of the uh, qualifying, and we, we like, we wanted to make the draw, but we made it to move 40. Yeah, no one has tweeted anything, so do I do I message Anish to uh, to fire the first Twitter hot take? <laughs> maybe, maybe. But yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that that's actually... I, I could have sworn that that was just the, the rule, was you can't make a draw before move 40. Okay, replay the game, guys. Replay the game. But they'll just play the same thing. I mean, it, it doesn't matter, It doesn't matter, obviously. Yes. Um, But because they, they, they would just make the draw anyway. But still, like, they didn't repeat you guys. There's no threefold repetition. They just made normal moves. It was just knight d3, queen d2, and they agreed to a draw. There, were, there was no 40 moves. Um, very strange. Amazing. The rules are optional and Magus is involved. Well, I mean, not 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 to belabor the point, but I do I do think that that's actually a slight issue is when there are potential conflicts of interest involved. Like like Magus owning Chess Twenty Four, like there is a clear conflict of interest potentially if something happens a certain way. Well, apparently we have um, five minutes. Mm -hmm, exactly five minutes until um until we we have the first blitz game. 
But I mean, you guys, I, I'm, I'm not saying there's anything anything going on here, but I'm saying in general that can be a problem when you when you have such a situation. Oh, actually, someone just pointed out if Magnus gets fined, he's actually in a way just paying himself. Ah, which which is kind of uh, yeah. That, that's why that's why I mean, it, as great as Ben, I I do think that's it is a little bit sketchy in that sense that you have someone who owns the company playing in the, playing in these events. Like it is it is a touch sketchy. <laughs> yeah, how actually does that work? Um. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Actually, I mean, obviously, it's like no, nothing, nothing. I mean, there's nothing nefarious going on. But, but it is, it is a valid point that if, like, if, if, it's like if someone gets fined, you know, like, if Magnus were to complain about a player or something, or even Magnus gets fined, like that is essentially just putting money in his own pocket. Which is, I mean, <clears throat> not that it would ever happen, but it, it is actually an issue potentially. Well, I was going to say, uh, mm-hmm. there's only one way to counter this. <laughs> Introducing the 2021 TSM Chess Tour. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Sponsored by uh, Logitech and who else? Who, who, who else is a? I'm just kidding. There, That's well, my computer thing. is Lenovo, so they're another sponsor. But yeah, okay, Lenovo, go. Geico, all kinds of stuff. But anyway, yeah. So <laughs> good. One. That would be hype if we get a rival chess tour. You guys gotta play like two times a month in different tours. Oh man, that would be insane. Yeah, insane. So okay, um. Let's see, do they have the Blitz game up yet? Maybe they don't have the Blitz game popping up. Um, I don't see it right off. Yeah, I'm check in and see if we can get it. Mm-hmm. I'm starting Chess 25 and Chess 26, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why don't I update the scoreboard? Uh, that's, uh, we'll, we'll just wait, we'll, we'll, we'll wait a second. So it's, it's two, two. So the game starts in five minutes. It's the best of two, five minutes plus three second increment, you guys, two games. And if they're still tied, then there's an Armegadon game where one player gets five minutes, the other play, or white gets five minutes, black gets four minutes. Winner, uh, white has to win the game. So if it's a draw, it counts the win for black. Magnus will choose black, yeah, I mean. In Armageddon, of course he will, yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a question for you. It's mm-hmm. a question in my chat. It says, why isn't Fide involved in online chess in any way? That's not quite true, right? Um, I mean, not completely. I mean, they're involved uh, in various collaborations for tournaments on like chess.com and, and like with these, these chess 24 events. But Fide itself does not really have a playing platform. I mean, they have a Fide platform, but it's, it's not really uh, comparable. So for that reason, um, it's, uh, it's like that. Test 24 says 15 minutes. Is it 15 huh. minutes? Like, wait a second. Is it really 15 minutes? I okay, played Maxime. Yeah, I did. Okay, yeah. No, no, it is. It is 15, and it's in between. It's five. Okay. I was trying to recall because I had a tiebreaker um, against Maxime, whether it was 15 minutes or not. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, it was 15 minutes, and then in between, it's five minutes. Okay, uh, then I will I will just be back in a few minutes. Ah, uh, you're going to take another break? Okay, all right, cool. Uh, maybe I'll play some Blitz then if I, if I wait. But we, we don't have anyone. Um, yeah, I'll just play some Blitz. Maybe I'll play okay. Yawn. Ooh. Okay, here, let me follow so that the game pops up. Uh, uh, he might be... Sh- I, I don't know, but he's not accepting. So I'll play Haunt. I'll play Haunt. Our, our, our favorite our favorite Haunt. Play a couple games against Haunt. I'm not taking a break, you guys. Not right now. Let's go A6. I'll play some Blitz. Let's go here. I'm going to make a check. I saw Bortnik play this against me, you guys, so I'll, I'll play this. Oh, I blunder knight f5. Whoops. Whatever. Um, it's kind of actually not what I wanted to do, but it's still chess, so it should be okay. I'll just play d6 takes. Maybe I'll take on d3 at some point. Um, Hans is only an IM for three more. Hans's rating is not 2,500, so he's gonna—he's not gonna be a GM yet, unless I'm mistaken. 
Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I don't... Hans's rating is not high enough to become a GM yet. I will castle here. Play... I can play B6. I'm just going to go rookie 8, maybe knight F6 next move. Yeah, his rating might be 2485, but it, the norms isn't all. You also need a ranking, you guys. So you need you need a, you need an ELO ranking um, of 2500 to get the title, and Hans does not have that yet, so he will not become a, a grandmaster just yet. Right, he's got knight up three, which I forgot about. Maybe I'll just go back. He plays f3, which is kind of interesting. I'm gonna go knight f6, f4. I have knight g4, g3 just queen h3. And I thought I had knight h5 here on like knight f4. He's trying to create a big center here. I think this is just fine with knight f4, knight e2, maybe. I can also drop the queen back and play c5. So I'm moment to remove this knight if I need to. Okay, it goes there. If I go knight f4, what's this move? If he takes, I just take. Okay. We'll drop back. Definitely gonna play like knight g6 here, maybe knight f4 again. If f4, I have like c5 ideas, maybe b7 also looks good. Um think about this. Maybe just bishop d7 and just double stack. I also have c5 at the moment. I'm gonna go c5 and bishop d6. He's always got knight g3, but I can go like queen h4 or something as well. So I don't really like my position. So I'm gonna retreat and go like queen here. Maybe knight e6, knight, knight d4 at the right moment is playable. I also have g6 or something. What do you think is realistic, highest achievable piety rating for someone with no natural talent, just through hard work? Just through hard work? Um, yeah, I, I don't know right off. Um, I'm gonna do this. It's probably a bad move, but I, I don't, I don't actually like my position. I kind of misplayed this a little bit. 96 is fine. Why did I do 96? 96, maybe knight c5, hit the pawns. Knight b3. Okay, he goes b4. Seems like a strange move somehow. I have b5 here. Ah, uh, he just wants f5? Is that his idea? Wait, wait a sec. I can also play bishop a4. I'm gonna go here and then b5 next move. Or bishop b3 is also. No, I think I just go b5 out. F5, just knight, knight F8, and I take the pawn at bishop B5. It's not, it's not ideal, but it's playable. Probably just eh, it's slightly worse, I guess. I should be able to draw this with some good play, though. I think. Ah, that was a bad free move, but it's still playable. Let's we'll go here and F6. Maybe. Put pressure on the pawn. If H4, I just draw it back. I have rook A8 to hit put pressure on this pawn as well. The next match is starting to uh, start very soon. Um, let's go here and put pressure on this pawn. So if takes, I take E4's hand. It's just going to be a draw, but it's not that bad. I'm not muted. Levy is muted, I believe. Take. I thought I had D5. Oh, he's got rook C1. Oh, no, but I take an IV3, actually. Rook E3. Is a move. I have 90, 94 is also a move. Rookie 4 looks quite good. Takes, you know, 8. Oh, wait. Rookie 4 has got rookie 7 and rookie 1. You can also just go knight f7, maybe. Yeah, I think I go here to hit the rook. And rookie 4, maybe? Wait. There, I can play h5. I also have 98 at some moment. Knight f5 is no good. Um, if I just wait a second, I just gotta move. Go here. Probably a bad move. Exactly. Although I can still make a draw because I have rookie one at some moment. Take. There we 
go. Love you there. Yup. Okay. Um. I didn't want to distract you, so I was just muted. That was a bad game, but I got the win. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you, you, you were muted, so it's all good. All right, but I think the game's gonna start soon, so let's let's just keep it rolling. I do, in fact, have it on my agenda to keep it rolling. Um, all right. Okay, so um, is it best of know. four? No, so so chat. Sorry, let me just get give them the format. It's best of two games. It's five minutes plus th three second increment. Two games. So if someone gets one and a half points out of two, they win the match. It's over. And if it's tied after two games, they play one final game of Armageddon. Score update. It's updated. What are you talking about? Two it's, two. Wait, it's two two really? I threw one and a half. Uh -huh. Oh oh oh, sorry. I have to I have to open that window again. Yeah, yeah I no. just full screen it and leave it in the background. Mm -hmm. um, True. Ready. Mm -hmm. See, uh, who, so who is white in the first game? I don't know, know, actually. No clue. Okay, so white, black, white, black. I mean, Magnus gets to choose. I think Magnus gets to choose the color, so I assume he's going to choose black in the first game. So I'm going to assume this is the right board. Okay. Why does he get to choose? Because Magnus was the number one seat, you guys. So as the top seat, he gets to pick the color. He did choose black. Yeah, I, I of course. Because you always want to have white in the final game. Even here, if this game's a draw, he's white. If he loses, he is white. Like, he gets white in that final critical game. So that's always the correct strategy. It's important to uh, have the advantage of the first move, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um... But then, having said that, Magnus played into the Berlin because he thinks he has a bigger advantage in Blitz. I mean, I think it's just it probably he thinks he has he he has better chance than Blitz. Also, I assume that Magnus feels like uh, he hasn't played great chess, so I think he would just rather play a quicker game than a slow game. How much Blitz have they played against each other? Because they don't play at the World Rapid in Blitz, so then, what is it, just GCT? Yeah, I mean, Magnus obviously is a good scorer against Wesley. I don't know the exact numbers, but I, I would assume that, um... I, I would assume that Magnus feels his edge is bigger in Blitz than in Rapid, and that, that doesn't really surprise me. I mean, Matt... Uh, not Magnus, sorry. Wesley was very shaky in the Blitz, especially against me, so... Um, it feels like when he gets really low on time, he's a little bit shakier, potentially, so I, I think Magnus perceives he has more, more of an advantage. What was this? What was the score? What was the score on their banner blitz? They actually played banter blitz, right? Did they? Yeah, I, I think they did. They played some banner blitz. Chat, chat will know um, what happened. Really, blend, really, in the banner blitz? Oh. oh. Yeah. It was five and a half, oh. three and a half. So it was actually quite close. Okay. Wesley plays e4. Let's see. I bet Magnus will not play the Karokan again. He does. He does. He's not gonna play e5 though. Yeah, he's, he's gonna revert back. A C5 did not work well, so he reverts back. Okay. H4. Uh, okay. You know what line I like here with black? Okay, not not eight. Well, H6 is you know this is this is a uh, very normal, but I like uh, knight E7, knight G6. Mm -hmm. That's a very fun line. Um, okay, let's see. So is he gonna play A5 again or do something different? So this is the short variation, kind of, right? Like, uh, but... Yeah, so, I mean, this is this is exactly what they played last game, pretty much. Or no, it's not quite, because he, he went check early, so he didn't bring the knight out right away. But very, very similar position. Yeah. So, good knight b3, maybe c3, maybe c4, maybe bishop 2 and then knight e1, knight e3. It's very, very set plan for white here. g5, bishop g7 for black? Oh, oh, okay. Never mind. Oh, let me reload. The clock appeared to not be moving on mine, so I'll just reload it. Oh, this is Blitz, you guys. It's not Ar Armageddon. Magsy Bogues is Ma Magnus Carlsen, um, and of course, GMW, so is Wesley, so. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <sighs> I'm excited to see what happens. Uh... Mm hmm what does queen b6 accomplish, by the way? What's the idea behind queen b6? Is it to play c5 or go knight f5? 
I was gonna say probably move and yeah, try to go C5, yeah. Hmm. But because the problem is with the pawns on A4, A5, if you ever play C5, you release that B5 square where White's Bishop is very strong. Aren't you just? Wow. Okay. Okay. That's what he wanted. Wow. This is kind of. Wow. Is this really good for White? Wait. Why can't you just take? Take and go A5, right? And then Rook A4, Rook B4. But there's Knight F4 in between to hit the bishop and hit the pawn. Okay, it goes bishop d3. This actually, this is also what I was wondering if white can play bishop d3 first. Why white is much better? Very strange. Like, Magnus just improvising some stuff, right? Yeah, but I mean, why is he not just why is Wesley not just much better? a5, rook a4, rook b4. How does black guard the juicer on b4? I don't know. It's literally it just sitting there to be taken. Yeah, I mean, I, what is what is his idea? I'm really confused. Three times he played Karakhan. Yeah, oh, I, I, I don't know why. I mean, I don't know why he didn't play e5. That's I, uh, isn't Bishop b5 just winning for White now? Oh my what? God, it is. He just blundered Bishop b5. It's like it's actually on. It's not hard at all. It's very easy to see. Because you pin the knight, so it completely stops guarding c5, and if it moves forward, knight c5 is... Slides out. What? Uh, Hikaru, bishop b5, c4, knight c5, knight f8, probably just lose... Oh, knight b7. I mean, knight b... Yeah, I mean, maybe knight b7, king e7, and you can hope to draw this somehow, but... He took! He did No! He no, I... But he's... Now he's winning. What, what's going on? But Magnus played rook a5, and now after bishop b5, white is much better, no? Yeah, can you go C3 and B4 there too? Like This just looks lost. Yeah, just C3, GG's. Yeah, C3 is just game over. Take B, uh, take and B4 and you have 3v1. And you go Rook C1 and take the pawn. It goes Rook there. Ah, because still on Rook C8, there's C3 anyway. Yeah, and then it's oh. the same, ta same point. Oh, man. Oh, actually, Rook C8, there's also Knight D4, I just realized. There's Knight D4 and a Rook C5, Knight B3 with four to both Rooks. Very oh, strange. Man. Very, very strange stuff from Magnus. Oh man, and Hikaru, knight d4, you also push c6 next move. Right, exactly, yeah. Very, I mean, very weird. Wait, Magnus is just completely lost in 15 moves. Like, I mean... Yeah, just c3 don't... and... I mean... Although, Hikaru, I liked your plan more because this could be slow. If he doesn't win the pawn back on c3, mm -hmm. like some knight f4, c2, yeah, this actually looks a little bit... I mean, this is definitely good, but I mean, what? Rook a8, rook c1, right? Actually, how yes. good is this? Rook c1, f6? I mean, rook c1, f6, ef, gf, rook c3, e5. I mean, it should be good, but there's actually... There is some room for complication, right? With black having a big center. Mm-hmm. I mean, white is definitely winning, but, like... Why did he go knight f4, actually? Couldn't, wait, couldn't Magnus have gone c2, rook c2, knight e5? Yeah, I, I don't think he saw... Well, c2, knight d4? But, I mean, there's still complications, no? Yes, but, uh, yeah, we have this. No, Wesley has three on one. Three on one is crushing here, right? Like, just... Very, very strange. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what's with Magnus. I, today's just very, very weird. Oh, and what I was going to say is, guys... Wesley has played three times advanced Karakhan against Magnus Carlsen. If this is not telling you what you should, you should be playing against Karakhan, <laughs> you have to yeah. play e5, and then yeah. you can do whatever you want, but you need to take the center space. Right, yeah. So, now, mind you, know. don't forget when I played Magnus, I also beat Magnus in the first Blitz game of our tour final of the tiebreaker, um, and then he came back and he beat me in the second one. So it's not like, um, it's not like Magnus hasn't been in this situation before. Right. I think chat chat went full pogo mode without listening to the end of that. That that, that was <laughs> right. not a pogo. Yeah, was yeah, reverse. exactly. Yeah, because that's not how it ended, right? Totally. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, I beat him, but he still came back. Uh, oh, oh. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just come on, Wesley. A five. Just create the connect three here. This way, you relieve the bishop to come back to f one, and it should be very clean. Yeah. Exactly. Knight. Knight move. Knight d two, maybe. Okay, knight d2, I think it's a little... I mean, just hanging the pawn on g2, I don't think that's very human. 
I mean, it's oh, good even, for G3, but I didn't I, see. I didn't see that G2 was. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely fine, but I, I don't know in a blitz game where there's a lot of pressure, it's not an easy move to find. As long as he doesn't take out six, I don't like H4. However, I'm worried about some G5 and some rook G8 or rook H8 and some weirdness coming down the king side. Wow, look at this yeah. G5. I mean, it's obviously winning. Don't get me wrong, but it's just like it feels feels like you could blunder here. From time to time. Knight h3? Right, so he'll, Wait, his idea is to go king f1, right? Yeah, but I mean, there's like rook f8. I mean, this is still winning, but uh, this feels a touch. I don't know. You have to go knight. Oh, he goes back. Okay. I mean, I, I understand it because he, he gets the knight trapped on the edge. He figures that. If the knight gets stuck on h3, for example, knight h3, king okay. f1, this knight gets trapped here with g4 forever, it's just dead, going nowhere. So he, he plays it more positionally, which is fine. I mean, he's losing no matter what, so it's just up to Wesley to convert. That's all there is to it. Can you speak to, like, how how nervous do you think Wesley is? Ooh, I don't like that move at all. Oh, I really don't H5. like that move. H5. I don't, I mean, white's winning still, but I, oh. yeah, yeah, 95? Uh-oh. 95? As I asked that question. Magnus is going to see it too, I bet. Because the problem is F3, G4 is very obvious for White. Like I said, Wesley is very nervous here because he knows he's winning. Like, Magnus just blundered this opening. Don't play F3, though. Play like Bishop F1, Bishop G2. Just try to try to shut it down and keep the positional bind going. Oh, man. No, HG gave Black such huge chances now. Yeah, I mean, one. yeah, that was really unnecessary. I mean, Wesley is still winning with correct play. But bishop f1 g2, just just bring that bishop back, try to stabilize. I mean, f3 apparently is still good, but rook h8, I, this, is, uh, this, is getting, uh, this is getting dicey. Okay, this is getting really dicey after rook h8. Uh-oh. Getting because really dicey. Because you're also threatening to just chop. Right. Chop, and oh, knight g4 is an idea. Yeah. If you take, you get mated. Oh, no, if you take, it's check. Yeah, but the problem is also, I think Wesley thought he had f3, but take six, knight f3, rook f3, bishop f3, rook f1, there's there's g4 holding the bishop, so you don't win it. Okay. This is, oh, no. Yes. And Wesley's low on the clock, too. This is very bad. This is very dangerous. Will he play g4 here, which apparently is the best move? Hard to play because of rook h2 and knight g4. Yikes. Yeah, Wesley's best move is G4. Yeah, he plays F3 and now Rook H2, and it's it's 100% game on. Oh, this is unbelievable. Oh, but Hikaru, maybe he'll win on the queen side with C6. I mean, I'm, I guess. But I mean, the problem is after takes Bishop A6, Rook A7, how are you winning here? You can't push the juice. This will probably be a draw, I'm guessing. I think I think with correct play, this is probably a draw. How many times has he saved the losing position? Whoa, now? what is D4? Rook F1, no? Rook F1 just oh, wins oh, because you win the blunder. pawn of B7. Huge blunder. Oh, but he, maybe there's Rook H8, Rook H1. King F2 takes King F1. Oh no, you know why it's winning? It's winning because Rook F1, I'll show you guys very quickly. He'll probably, we'll see a move, but it's winning because of Bishop F1. And takes B5 and A6, I think, and you get Bishop G. Oh no, I'm wrong. Let's go back to the game. I'm wrong. Never mind. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm just wrong. <laughs> I'm just wrong. Okay. Um, no, but you have no. the right idea. It's that there's a queenside break. Right, exactly. I mean, yeah. He plays it. Good. It's all happening. Will yeah. Wesley play bishop f1? Yeah. Bishop f1 wins and king f1 is the draw. Yeah, bishop f1. Yeah, so bishop f1 and b5 is. Ah, because you go bishop g2 first. That's why it's winning. Yeah, it's winning he's because... It. Yeah, it's winning because on takes b5, bishop b5, you go bishop g2 first. It's the same idea, but this is why it wins. Oh my gosh. Wow. And the, yeah, and it's, it's over. Insane. It's over. There's nothing, there's nothing the Magnus can do here. Wow. Oh my... I cannot imagine the response that this is... I mean, he's up two minutes on the clock and blunders this. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, like I said, Magnus has just been off his game. He really has. He's just been off his game. Oh my goodness. Wow. Also, credit to Wesley. Wesley's biggest drawback is his conversion, it feels like. Mm -hmm. He's been playing very well. 
right? Yeah, I mean, I mean this was know. very shaky. I mean, Magnus... I know, I know, but mm -hmm. I'm saying his conversion, even against you, his conversion has been shaky. But it feels like he's to get to that point. Yeah, he, you're right. He's been playing very well to get to that point. That that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's over. I mean, it's literally, this isn't even, yeah. so bishop d5, Hikaru, you're saying bishop g2 first, and then Right, because if you go a6, I take and go e, go e5. And then oh on bishop b2, I cut, the, I cut the diagonal and I hold it. But if you, if you oh. play bishop g2 first, you just win. What? You're, and black's king is outside the square, and that's right, it. Right, yeah. Well, bishop d5, bishop g2, you can also go like king e5, but then just still a6. It's just, you, you can't catch, the, you can't catch it. It's one, two, three, and it's one, two to the end of the board. That is astounding. Yeah. I mean, uh, all the credit in the world to Wesley for finding Rook F1. Because, I mean, he, it was getting very shaky already. I, I'm sure he thought he'd, he'd blown the advantage. So, insane. Insane. Wow. Wow. Also, big shout out to the 42,000 you guys who are watching. This is very, very intense. Um... Crazy, crazy stuff. I mean, it's insane when you think about this, isn't it, Levy? Like, when you think about the fact that, um... Wait, is there D3 here? Is there some trick, like, D3? Is there some trick here? Like, D3 and Bishop C can't be, right? Just... No, this can't be. Yeah, because D3, you take Bishop C6, you go King E3, King E5, A7, and then you just wait on E2 to go to F3, and you win. Yeah, he has yeah. to just find this and be yeah. patient. Yes. 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 He has to, I mean, taking is a very natural mm -hmm. move. Mm -hmm. He just has to yeah. play it. Not freak out here. A7 is apparently throwing the game away. Is it? No, I mean, A7 wins too, I guess. Yeah, it's all winning. Yeah, there, there's no way Wesley can work. Yeah, it's King E3. Yeah, Crazy. impossible. Bishop Crazy. F1 also works, right? Bishop F1 yeah. actually is clean. It is very clean too. Yeah, yeah very clean. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. Insane. Beautiful. And it's over. Magnus yeah. Carlsen on the ropes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, he's been very shaky. I mean, he's just he ha he hasn't been himself. I mean, I, like I can't recall last time I've seen Magnus get so many losing positions out of the opening. But it, it begs the question: Why is he playing the Karo Khan? Because he already was really te tempting fate with the previous game, and he does it again. Like really really tempting fate so he actually loses the game so now it's a five minute break um before the second game starts yeah it's crazy 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 stuff this is the finals you guys yeah this is oh man yeah crazy. welcome to the show welcome to the show exactly yeah yeah this, uh, this, this is this is really something i go to twitter to see what's going on apparently um YouTube creators tweeted at Anish and congratulated him on hitting 100,000 subs. They didn't do that for us, Hikaru, did they? Um, I don't think so, no. Does he know someone? How do we get that to happen? <laughs> I don't know, Levy. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, let's see if Magnus can turn it around. This is going to be a very interesting um, interesting final game. So it gets me after Magnus lost the first Blitz game. The final, he played a very slow English position that was complicated. Um, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what he does this time. It's gonna be, I, I, I kind of wonder. I'm very curious. <sighs> All right. He is a niche. That's fine. True, true, yeah. Um, man, we are, we are rolling. You guys are providing some amazing energy. This could be the final game of the mm -hmm. Skilling Open. Exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, like, I expect, I expect, um, I mean, I expect Magnus to play something where we get a slow position. That's really the, the key. If Magnus can get a position out of the opening where there's a lot of play, it's not easy to play, then he's going to have chances. But, I mean, he's been, he's just been too shaky. I mean, Wesley, Wesley has played well, don't get me wrong, but Magnus has been really off form. Like, it, between what happened yesterday and then even today losing the second game, uh, just very, very strange. Very strange stuff to see. Okay, so it's the final round. Angus is white. Mm -hmm. What does he play? Not e4. I think he's gonna play c4. I think he's gonna play either c4 or he's gonna play c4 or d4. I guess is the question. I don't know what he's gonna play. My guess is he's gonna play c4 though. That's my guess. I think it's gonna he's gonna play in English. Now will Wesley go from mainline e5 or symmetrical with c5? 
Oh, that's true. Yeah, Wesley normally likes E5, but he might play C5 here. That's a good point. Yeah, I wonder what Magnus will play. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, C4 is... C5 is literally the reason why I have annoyances playing C4. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah, I don't I don't know. That's, that's, that's a very good question. My guess is that... Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know what I, what I expect Magnus to play here. My, my guess is that he's going to play... My best guess, though, is that he's going to play... What can he play to get a game? He can play Catalan. It's probably not London? what he wants. London? I think London is a reasonable guess. Yeah, I think London London or English, one of those two. He's going to play D4 with the London system, or he's just going to play C4 with the English. That's my you guess. You know one thing I noticed? Magnus doesn't play a lot of Catalans. He doesn't mm -hmm. play a lot of G3, Bishop G2. Why is that? Right. I mean, I, 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 mean, I assume he doesn't love the system, generally speaking. It's because it's very structural not a lot of not a lot of like movement in terms of pawn placement and it's not that dynamic yeah what yeah. else is there london or England, vienna exactly. what, mm -hmm. i i really liked your the way you played against wesley first of all because you played vienna style right and also because uh those those e4 knight c3 bishop c4 systems are nice <laughs> that's a, yeah. that, that could be a serious option before knight c3 bishop c4 yeah i i mean i don't know um Yeah, I think Magnus. I think Magnus is gonna he's gonna play the London system, or he's gonna play the English opening. Basically, London is not English, you guys. I know you guys are being very funny about it, but um, yeah. but I, I think those are the two two choices that he has, as far as I can tell. I can't think of any other choice really, unless he's gonna play some kind of D three knight, like knight f three G three or something. I, I don't know what what um what he can do, <laughs> but isn't London English? Yeah. Well, we're gonna see very know, soon. I don't know why. Yeah, like there's an English opening which is C4, and then there's a London opening. <laughs> I mean, no, I London system. The, you mean London system? Not an opening. Yeah, and uh, people have started to even call it like accelerated London. Yeah, well, there's like the Joe Baba system, right, or something. There's as well. that. Yeah. There's also the London where you just play Bishop F4 and you don't play the Knight to F3. You delay the movement of the Knight. To true. F3. True. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we're gonna we're gonna see. Don't don't ironic. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Now, yeah. if you go to YouTube and you type in Anish Giri, then like one of the number one searches is Anish Giri Joe Baba. Mm -hmm. so that, that makes sense. Yeah. That 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 video. Is, Joe Baba, uh, you guys don't don't be weird. Joe Baba. Um. You know, Twitch chat, guys, I used to teach this student who was in like fifth grade, sixth grade, and he couldn't say Joe Bava London. Mm -hmm. So he started saying exactly what you were saying now. He was 10. <laughs> he was what? He was saying Joe Mama? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's what he was calling it. He would call it the Joe Mama London. Yes. <laughs> As you know. Yeah. So chat, you know, listen, I'm not, you know, I'm just saying. It, we're right. playing in the same sandbox here as like a sixth grader, but... Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. So let's let's see. Um, let's 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 see. I, I mean, I I expect an English. That's that's my best guess. And against C five, do you expect maneuvers? Oh, he plays okay, D four. D four. Okay. So London English is out of play. London system is in play. Wow. Okay. He's not gonna go into the end game early. Okay. He plays E three. Okay. So what, what Magnus is going to play is he's going to play a system where he gets an isolated pawn on d4, which I think considering the situation makes some sense. But what's, I, what's I, the, I don't like the I don't like the choice. I really don't like the choice in, in general. So I think it's just going to be very hard to play. Isn't this already good for black after b5? Yeah, I, and you're not supposed to. It doesn't seem like you're supposed to allow this bishop b7. Wow, so Magnus is going to play a... This I hate. I, I mean, I don't. I don't like this decision at all by Magnus. So he's trying to play an end game. I don't like. I don't like this. In, in, in a must-win game in Blitz, I don't like this choice. I really don't like this choice. But we'll see. Maybe. Maybe he has. Um, I'll refresh the page. The time starts going, you guys. Maybe. Um. I mean, maybe he's looked at the system. But I mean, I. I just. I feel like that. There's this such a such a strong. There's such a strong draw tendency here in these systems if you're not 100% precise with white. So I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But I, I, I just, I, yeah, I mean, I'm not in love with this setup by any stretch of the imagination. 
Oh, but two bishops okay. now? Two bishops. That's, I mean, a, an improvement. Although, actually, it's not that great because I think I had this against Fabiano in a game in Gibraltar a couple years back, and I was like, I was like, okay, I just take the bishop for free. It's like Braddock, as they say in Latin, and um, you just get two bishops. But the problem is, it's still black structure is very solid. So I assume he's going to go b4, or b3, and bishop a3. I don't know which one. Probably b4 because after, um, after, wait, what? Or no, he didn't take, oh wait, no, he didn't take? No, sorry, he didn't take, that was me. Um, so takes, takes, then b4, b3. Knight a5 is also an interesting move here, I think. But he has to take one of the bishops. Is Magnus the kind of guy to play knight c5 and b4? b4 seems very committal. I feel like b3 is... Right, but the problem with the position is it's an endgame, so he kind of has to be committal. That's why I don't like I don't like the opening approach by Magnus here, because it's a situation where he has to kind of go for broke. And so doing this... Okay, plays knight a5. So what he's going to do is he's going to take this bishop and try to argue the pawns aren't stable long term, but he can use flight square bishop to win the game. Okay, this is all the imbalance that he needs, no? Kind of feels like. Right, now, at the same time, I mean, as you guys can see from the engine evaluation, black is okay. But Wesley has to find some, some good moves. He has five minutes on the clock. I mean, I think Wesley should be able to draw this without too much danger um, uh, if, he, if he just plays a couple of good moves. This is... Yeah, and the nerves obviously are going to come into play too for Wesley here. Like, I, I mean, I would probably just go like Rook C8 or Rook C7, try to double up, and then ask Magnus what his plan is exactly. Like, type it in the chat. Mm -hmm. You guys can't chat with each other, right? You have no... No, of course not, because I, I would have to be in the Zoom call. Okay. I mean, I, I, I know nobody would, but just in case one of you decided to go crazy and just start writing messages to the other. <laughs> True. Um, Okay, let's see. What's Magnus going to do here? Maybe it's b4 and a4 or something? What about b4 and a4? Like b4, bishop, b4, knight, b5 with the fossil of the bishop? And b4, bishop, d6, a4. Is that really that bad? I mean, I guess there's rook c8. Maybe. Anyway, do I, have, I don't know. Well, do I have to take? Well, okay, he played rook d1. But... Yeah. Actually, I'll stop the music, you guys. I think, I think some of you want no music, so I'll, I'll stop the music for this final game. Um... Okay, let's see. But now, what's he gonna do? Play a4, maybe, or play play bishop e1? I mean, I I, I just I feel like that's too little here. It just feels like too little. If it, it just it doesn't feel like enough. It really just doesn't feel like enough. And given the time disadvantage, he also doesn't feel like it's enough. But why would he do it? He felt like why not? I don't know. Just yeah. I mean, just... I would rather just keep pieces on the board. I, again, it seems to me very, very strange. Uh, can you go bishop b5 here? Oh no, there's bishop b5. Oh no, there's bishop b5. Knight b5, rook c6, knight a7, and white. Oh, and Magnus is gonna see this too. I bet. There's no way Magnus doesn't see this. I mean, he's off, so he might not see it. But vintage Magnus would see bishop take b5 here. Take, take rook c6, knight a7, and he has but... two pawns. He does, but can they move if the bishop gets the e5? Uh, he's got to do it, though. And, and the reason I expect Magnus to play this is because against me, there was this game we played in the first event where he, he sacked a rook for a bishop, a rook, he had a rook and two pawns for a bishop and knight. So he's got to do it. He does it. There okay. it is. There it is. Let's see. Okay. Are we going to have our Megadon? Wesley, Wesley must have missed this. This is not... I think Wesley just missed knight a7. He probably saw pawn takes, takes rook c6, takes, takes bishop b4, knight c5, and he's like, okay, it's all good. Okay, now um, now this is going to get interesting. Because Wesley's going to have to use time, and it's on Wesley to prove that he can stop the juice. There's no guarantee that he can. This is but actually... He has to take. He has to take. He should just instantly take and then think. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is going to be very, very, very uh, dicey. Let's see what happens. Okay, come on. You gotta move west. Let's go. Because, see, the problem here is that, that after... I mean, I, I'm not even gonna make the moves, but the, the problem is that after take takes rook c6, knight a7, the pawns are just fast, and these pieces, they have no targets. Every All the pawns are very secure on the king side, and white just has a free hand to push these juicers down the board. But Wesley should just insta-take. Just instantly take. There's no other move. If you don't take the bishop, you resign. Just take it, save your 30 seconds, and then think. Don't think here. But he's thinking here. 
I guess he's doing it the other order, but I... I, uh, I mean, Rook B8... I mean, maybe, actually, no, Rook, Rook B8 was maybe a move, too, there. Okay, but now Wesley should move instantly. He used 30 seconds there. He had to have figured out his next move, right? But he's not moving. Um... Um, see, this is why he should have played the move instantly, Levy. Just take and then think, because it's on this turn. He used, he yeah. used too much time, and now, like, and now he... And now he's burning even more time. Uh, uh... He's, okay. I mean, he, he totally missed this, and this is yeah. just his shock. Well, yeah, because they thought he was drawing the game 97, of course. Okay. Okay, Bishop E5, that's a good move. Mm-hmm. But many positions, Bishop B4 is unpleasant. Yeah, th I mean, this is going to be very hard for Wesley. Very, very hard for Wesley. Let's see, let's see, let's see what he, what, uh, what Magnus does here. He also has Bishop B4 check, for example. Bishop B4 is, is a big check here, hitting the king first. But I think the idea is like check. You take. I, I would guess you take the back rank. I guess Peter like this one. And something like Rook C1. Now, I mean, how do you defend this, Levy? How do you defend two juices? This is going to be really unpleasant. It is. Let's see. It is. But... I mean, Magnus... stranger things have happened in this match, <laughs> to be fair. Like, yes. really strange things have happened. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't know. Apparently, I mean, let's see. Magnus apparently just should keep it simple and play Rook A, B, 1. Right. Let's see. Let's see what he does. So he's, he's contemplating which Rook to capture. Okay, so he does the, the human cap, which is the cap to that, which apparently is really bad. I don't understand yeah, why. Yeah, apparently, apparently now if he hangs around with rook b1, uh, rook a8, a3, and the pawns can't move. Ah, that's why. Okay, okay, wow. So, uh, Wesley can freeze the pawns. Or just a4. Sack the right, b1. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, no, of course. Totally. Makes sense. Um, oh, man. Wow. 90 seconds. But Magnus has to just move. He's just gotta go, kind of. Play like Bishop B4, Bishop A3, go Rook C1. But trust the intuition and just move here, I think. If he gets too long time, there's no way he's gonna win the game, I don't think. Wow. Very, very, nice. very tough. Very tough and a must win here. Okay, Rook A8, good move. So A3, of course. Yes, yeah, so now Wesley has, uh, Magnus has difficulties because there's no way to push the B pun. Well, you or can the go A B3, pun. A4, because if Rook A3, there will be Bishop B4 checking the King and the Rook. Ah, so, B okay, B3 will be the next move. Okay. Yeah, very, very tricky. Very tricky. Okay, knight D5. Oh, but he goes knight D5 to stop that. And rook C1 apparently was a mistake. Why was it a mistake? No E4 now. I guess F5 and no E4, apparently. Ah, E4 is supposed to be very good. Okay. That's insane. Wesley's playing this for a win now or something? Well, I mean, he, he doesn't need to win. But yeah, Wesley's yeah. in great shape here. I mean, Magnus is trying to bring the king, push the pawn. H5, all the pawns, yes. Look at this. Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, it's still not. It's still not over though. Like G4 he's not out of the Wesley to, on G4 or H4. Uh, probably G4 to just exchange pawns. Because the, the less pawns on the board, the better off it is for Wesley. G4 feels right. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. probably H4, H4, King E2 will happen, or King E2 right away. Probably King E2 right away. You don't want it. You don't. You want to keep more pawns on the board if you're white here. Keep the winning chances alive, basically. Oh my God, Magnus has 45 seconds, man. Yeah, I mean he's just got to go. Got to go. Just got to go. But I, I, yeah, I just I feel like in general Magnus has just been really off today, like really, really off. Um, very, very strange. Okay, Wesley has to like chill out for a second and not do anything insane. Yeah, like Knight F6 is good. I mean the problem good is white start. just can't move. White just can't. Move. Now, apparently G3 is really good here. I don't think he'll play it, though. I think he'll just play like Knight E4. Because G3, F4, you just lose the pawn. I guess you don't, but it, that's, like, too good. Right, but now A4. Okay, takes, takes, A4. Maybe you can you play... Throw in an E3 take, right? E3? Yeah, and if GH5... You have to oh, I didn't even think of that. Knight okay. Knight 5 Yeah, I mean, I, I... Yeah, I mean, this has been bad play. Bad play by, by Mac. Um, I mean, he just hasn't been, he hasn't been himself in this, this game, especially. Because of his birthday? Maybe. Maybe his birthday, I don't know. <laughs> but it's just, yeah, something just seems off. Okay, now Knight G4, I mean, Wesley has the game. I mean, he's gonna win the game, right? 
Oh wait, knight g4, bishop d2, rook f8, there's a4. Uh, so complicated. Let's see. Again, it's not over till it's over though, Levy. Because I remember like when I was playing that, or when I was playing, mm -hmm. what's that? King f7, king c6. Oh, but there's rook f1, rook c6. It goes, it goes this that way. way. So e4, obviously. E4, knight f Oh, because there's a check on there's a checkmate on D1, Levy. There's a checkmate on D1. Oh my god. You have to go knight e3, which is very hard to play here. What about check on oh, knight f4. No, but knight f4, king f3. And do you have some repetition? Knight, knight h2, yeah. Knight h but he finds you the do. best. Oh, move. knight c4, yeah, you have knight c4. Oh yeah, Wesley is gonna Wesley's gonna hold this game now, I think. Magnus has no time. Wesley's gonna hold this game. Yeah, Wesley's gonna win this. He's gonna win now. Yeah. Bishop B2? Yeah, also also Bishop B2 uh, is an easy draw now. Bishop B2. Yeah, wow. 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 Yeah, very impressive by Wesley, especially here at the end with like the minute on the clock. He's played this very precisely. He's played this very, very precisely here at the end. Um I mean, Ma Magnus is not going to be happy with what happened. I mean, this is this is good. Bishop b2 is good. Everything is everything is winning. There's there's no way. Hey, I mean, knight f4, bishop b2. I mean, I would just go bishop b2 here. Just end the game. Take any risk out of the air here with bishop b2. But I mean, he can play knight f4 and just try to win. But the reason that I don't like this, however, oh wait, no, he can still take. Yeah, and all the game, all it's all gone. It's all gone. It's all gone. Bishop d1 or knight d5. Knight d5. Just draw. End of story. Game over. Wow, Game over. 96. Just 96 and 95. GG's. GG's. There you go. Wesley wins. Wesley wins the event. Wesley wins. Yeah. Wow. Crazy, crazy stuff. So, I mean, obviously, big shout out to Wesley for winning this. Um, winning this crazy, crazy match against Magnus. Uh, I think, you know, in, in, in general terms, what I would say is that for Magnus, the, the upside to this is that it seemed like he played really, really badly, and he still came extremely close to winning the match. So um, that's the upside for Magnus, but obviously all the props go to Wesley for um, for keeping his nerves together, really, especially in that first blitz game, finding playing D6, finding work F1 was very, very critical. Um, Magnus rage quit. I mean, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, Magnus should be pretty, pretty upset with what, with what happened in this this game. Um, like I, he, I, 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 I think he has plenty of reason to be upset. But again, Magnus, you know, he he had opportunities. I, I think really for him, the, the the choices that he made, especially yesterday in the final game, playing the Sicilian, not playing e5, um, or today playing the Karl Khan three times, getting bad positions every game. Like it's really. I mean, he, he paid a big price for it. Yeah, it, but it it started so well, Hikaru. He started the day with a win in the Caro. Like True. if he, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, like, like I said, I think you know, I think I think in general, um, his mistake was kind of he just he he kind of refused. He just he refused to play like the the he, he refused to try and be kind of solid. He wanted to play entertaining chess, and I mean, he just that was just a huge huge price that that he paid because he, he got too aggressive and. Um, I, I felt, you know, after that second game today, that or the second black game in the Karo Khan, he really, he really should have dialed it back in that first blitz game and played, um, and played, uh, played, played, played E5 and not played the Karo Khan or done something much more stable. And, um, yeah, it's how it goes. I think we set a record, by the way, in terms of viewers today. So, uh, big shout out to all you guys for watching. Um, uh, thank you so much. 50k! Yeah, yeah, new record, new record. Um, hey, Karo, quick, crazy. go to Twitter. Go to Twitter? Well, what's on Twitter? No, I'm just saying, like, you gotta, you gotta tweet this. This is a 50k. Is, is a lot of damn people in one stream, man. <laughs> yeah. Again, thank you so much to all you guys. You're, you're incredible. Appreciate it. Um, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. So once again, big shout out, big shout out to Wesley. He played, he played a great finals. Obviously, it's really nice because if you, if you lose, it's always great to lose to a, um, to a. Uh, I made six thousand people leave. Right. Thank, thank you so much, to all you guys for watching. Big shout out, of course. Um. Wesley, he it feels really good when you lose the eventual winner. Um, so fantastic. Do you guys have a clip, by the way? Is there a clip of um? Is there a clip of uh? Yeah, there's some. He's not happy. Let's see. Someone want to link me to it? I know it's gonna get blocked out, but what's this? Okay, let's. This chance. We're gonna One see second. everything yeah. hoovered off the board. We're gonna see King. One second. I'm. I'm. I'll. I'll, I'll pop it up. There. One second. Back.
Okay. Um. So there we go. Let's watch this. This is chance. We're gonna see everything we're... hoovered off the board. We're gonna see King versus King. King. And Wesley's done it. And you can see that. And let's pump. look at Wesley So right now. He is the winner of the Skilling Open. Wesley So, the American 27 year old. He's beating the world champion in the Skilling Open final. Magnus Carlsen angry. Wesley So, you can allow yourself to celebrate now. He's very. Okay, there he leaves. He's going to celebrate. Congratulations to Wesley So. Wow! Wow. Um. <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny. Uh, good stuff. You still there, Levy? Or you, you probably muted yourself, right? Oh, that was very yeah. mild. Sorry, I just finished the clip. That, yeah, that was yeah, so it, it, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Um, but yeah, that's a huge win for for Wesley, obviously. Um, uh, to win this final against Magnus, uh, what what can you say? Wesley played very well, kept his nerves together. Um, and I mean, yeah, you can say that Magnus, you know, he didn't play as best cusp, which I think is 100 percent true. But um, you know, you still you still have to you still have to take advantage of that when Magnus is playing his best. And so, a big shot to Wesley for for winning winning this crazy final against uh, against um, against against Magnus. So, uh, wow, you're uh, you're we're. You're streaming, right? I yeah, I'm 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 going on. I keep going. We we, okay. we go for. I'm gonna I'm gonna probably eat a little food. Uh, talk to my chat, and then I'll uh, I'll send the raid over to you so we can hit some sort of uh, even higher record. Uh, I already lost 11k, but hey, who's counting? It's all good. So, uh, yeah. all right, I'll call them all up. All right, I'll give them <laughs> call your entire stream. Welcome back. <laughs> call your entire stream. Yeah, totally. Anyway, yeah, big shout out again. But but big shout out to you, Levy. Of course, to Anna as well for the great coverage you guys did of this of the skilling open and. Um, and we just uh we'll be back on december 27th right for the next event yeah it's yeah. been uh it's been awesome listen uh obviously you want to you know you you want to win we want we want you to win so mm -hmm. we got a we got lofty goals for the next one but uh, it, it's been unbelievable the amount of people that tune in every single day to watch this thing so yeah so so those of you guys who are asking december 27th the same not the exact same players but the same there will be another tournament for the champions tour which will begin um, which will begin then, so so one month away basically, and so we'll, we'll play another another uh, another event. Yeah. Well. All right. Fun. I'll I'll catch up with you soon, Levy. Okay. Cool. Bye, Have Hikaru. Bye, chat. See you See guys. You, love. Sure, I might say much love. Anyway. Um... All right, you guys. So so um so what Wesley wins wins that match. Crazy match, obviously. I'm going to step out, take a break, and when I come back, I'll just keep going, keep playing blitz, keep doing stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed the coverage though. So I'll be right back.